Welcome back to Tabletop Notch. I can see that you are just as scared as I am. And I do feel sorry for you. Why the sudden need to know about Kate? Because she's going to help me do what I came here to do. Burn off Get me! Back! Where are they? You want to talk to him? Where is he? Yes. I'll find him myself. I can take your ankle. For an hour, oh, you can't tell a knowing lie. That's okay. a long time! <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know Kate is not that good at lying anyway. <laughs> that does not prevent you from skirting a subject. You can yeah. simply not answer, but... Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tabletop Notch. We're coming at you tonight with chapter 15 of Brunk Hollow. 15. Uh, those who tuned in last week may have viewed, seen a spicy battle taking place in two parts of the downwheel there. A little less spicy than we initially thought. We did we did indeed yes. check the tape, and, and some other people, <laughs> play it, play it, play it. Uh, some people pointed out that uh, one of these sea spawn did attack after dashing, so we, we oh. took back the failed death saving throw. Unwatchable. Uh, <laughs> extreme unwatchable. Um, so it, it wasn't as bad as we thought, but still, still yeah. spicy. Little hair. Still spicy. I mean, and yeah. the whole you know Morna situation. Yes, the that was Morna spicy. of it all. Yes. yes. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> So much more to discover and uh, work our way back to town to meet with some people. We have some things on the agenda, but before we do, as always, where should we begin? Where do we begin, guys? <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to the Sunday Perfectly night planned <laughs> tabletop not stream on Twitch. Uh, it's so good to have you guys here. I hope you enjoy the episode. And um, on wait, that's it. Someone else take it from here. <laughs> While you may be joining us on Twitch right now, we are present on multitude of areas online, including all of the social medias and YouTube, and you, oh my God, I'm gonna lead into, we also have the podcast available on Spotify yeah. too. When is um, um, oh, Tuesdays. And mostly importantly though, you can follow us every day, any day of the week on every social media platform, including Instagram threads. So join us there. That's true. Yeah. We are uh, YouTube video goes live on Fridays. Uh, unless you are a Patreon subscriber or a YouTube member, in which case you'll get those a little early on Tuesdays. Um, yeah. They're super high def if you do that. They are. <laughs> you know what we want to see. They are. <laughs> high, high def right here. Um, the other thing that's very cool on Patreon, we are jumping around a <laughs> Let's go. Is, um, we, this is exciting for me. I don't know. I don't know who's we're gonna... better stay on your toes, Matt. Um, you, we have a Patreon. There's tons of cool perks on there at a variety of tiers. If you subscribe, you can get all of the old stuff and all the Broncolo stuff, which is pretty dope. Um, and Those now <laughs> I'm gonna kick it to Talon to talk about. Oh my goodness, the Discord <laughs> is a brilliant place. and You should join it. It's a discord.gg forward slash tabletop notch is where you can find us. And uh, there's one of the places, fan art. You can see all the cool things that people created for the show. After the episodes, you can talk with everyone in the community about what happened in the episode and what's spicy about it and theorize. Uh, and then it's just a, like, we had a nice meme pop up in general today. It was where I loved it. So you should join. Ooh. Um, next week for uh, Top Notch patrons, Spotify subscribers, and YouTube, YouTube members. members, let me finish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be doing Notch and Soda number four, where Ooh. we're gonna talk about the last like four episodes and chill and hang out, have some drinks, some saltines. We'll answer your questions from the Twitch chat. Um, oh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're a YouTube member and you want to like submit a question but you can't make it to the live shows, mm. uh, I'm gonna do like a community post so you can put a couple things in there. We'll try to get the questions, Aww. but it's very chaotic. Uh, yeah. for... If you've been to a previous Notch and Soda, <laughs> yeah. we go off the rails real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, no guarantee. <laughs> the invisible hat comes out. Uh, <laughs> trouble starts. Um, so that'll be next week, next Sunday. Yeah, we, and we, a lot of us, especially Jordan, read a lot, if not all, of your comments, and yeah. we fucking love all of them like, <laughs> across YouTube, Instagram, everywhere. I mean, it, it, thank you. You're 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 doing the polls on the different places. You're you're making comments in the YouTube's. You're liking. You're subscribing, and we like we 
Well, of course you like the polls. You're the one that always wins. Yeah, Anthony. Famous. Is it a win? Is it a win if I have the loudest farts? Well, okay, that was not a win. Least shippable. I won that one. That's that's a win loss. You're great above everyone. Because you're so mysterious and secretive. Truly, you gotta take the good with the bad, man, because you win every single He's one. He's very shippable. We'll just ship him out, we'll never ship see him. Him. <laughs> Ship him right exactly. off. <laughs> ship, sh oh, up. Ship him. If you're right ship out of no, okay. ship. No matter where you're watching or listening at any time, be sure to stick around for the end of the episode because there's a little tree. Ooh, another another, another tree. little tree. tree. Something that you may have seen in the Discord already, but now has say. extra features. Oh, I love it. I have a theory about this treat already. I, I know what the treat is. I'm so excited. Um, we love a good post credits treat. Here. Oh, yeah. Marvel, do Marvel, does Marvel still do that stuff? Yep, they yeah. Do, like post credits. Sure. Yeah, bonus <laughs> it's Harry yeah. Styles and Brunk Hollow. That's what's coming at the end. I saw oh all of the strangers God. this weekend, and I waited to see if there was a post-credit scene. There was not. <laughs> How dare they? We did that recently with Baldur's Gate, which has and a we were very long credits, which appreciate all their incredible hard work, and there was a secret scene at the end of the credits, which yeah. was worth it. We did cool. Yeah. yeah. So always watch the credits. Yeah, we beat. The, we finished. Congratulations! It. Thank you. Very cool. Whoa. It was very, very big. big. <laughs> this is big news. <laughs> just <laughs> casually <laughs> slipped in. <laughs> <laughs> not just soda. Not. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did we get it all? I think we did. Wow. Well done, team. Mm, Look great. at that. Who needs an outline? Mm -hmm. I mean, not me. we might need it. I think we do. Nor a frame. Nor a frame. <laughs> nor a frame. It's a single frame. Need neither frame nor out. Um, and always thank you to the people who are helping build our wiki and the people that mod our community. Um, yes. Thank you all so, so very much. Whirly Nerdish yes. for getting, uh, we have like preliminary uh, closed captions for all of our YouTube. We have yes. to do a second Amazing. scan of it to just like really make it um, like perfect, but th like it's still better than what YouTube automatically generates. So thank you to Whirly Nerdish for all of that work. Yeah. Um, Shall I thank people and get to work? Let's do it. Yes. All right, yeah. here we part. go. Chad Arnold resubscribed, Quadromo resubscribed, El Chunka Copper resubscribed, Wizard Knight gave out five community subs, Adria resubscribed, Russell Logan resubscribed, Raw Knight gave out 10 community subs, thank you so very much. Today resubscribed, Armand, hello, welcome, we love you. Jay Brownie, 1991, did a thousand bits, Wild Ooh. Meat Popsicle resubscribed, Tree of Life resubscribed, Pokadoka resubscribed, Niora, Niora Kim gave out a community sub, McBadgers subscribed with Prime, did you know you can subscribe with Prime? For free? for free? Yeah, for, for free. free. Want some more? For free. 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 So thank you all thank very you much. All oh, right. and merch, really merch, it. and merch. Yeah. We did forget. Oh. We forgot merch. We'll have, we gotta have an outline. Yeah, yeah. 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 we, we failed. Outline. We failed. Yeah. Cheers, guys. We did, really Cheers. did our best, though. Cheers. That's pretty darn good. Cheers. I'm pleased. Cheers. All right, so let's do the thing. We're gonna throw it over to the recap, slide into the intro, and then we'll pick up where we left off, which was a little bit of excitement. So we'll see where we are when we return. Are we ready to go? Yeah. We are fucking ready. Let's sure. go. Let's, Let's go. do it. Go. Oh, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Previously, on Chapter 14, Lion Detector Test. The retrieval of Bison's nephew was complete, so Doxley and Ilian rendezvoused with Kate to close out a Merc Hall contract. The three of them scouted a suitable area for their standoff, and two packs of direwolves closed in on a carcass that had been set up as bait. But the clash attracted the attention of a third party, a fleece main lion, whose keen senses turned observers into unwilling participants. Elsewhere, the humans half succeeded at talking down a pair of citizens from doling out some frontier justice, and from there made their way to the Clinker Run Bridge on their way to Detention Pass. Prisoners from the fort were crossing in the opposite direction on their way out to the digs, but one of them put their awkward tongue to use and summoned a flock of sea spawn as part of an attempted jailbreak. Combat breaking out in two parts of the downwield made for messy conflicts, especially when Morna couldn't contain the magic bubbling beneath the surface. But in the end, they all lived to fight another day. Would the fur and the fibers be enough to soften Maeve's tough exterior? And does Morna secretly hope that nobody on the bridge lives to speak of what they saw? Stick around and find out on Chapter 15, Broncolor. Sky Oh. 
Beginning of the stance phase. Hip in 50 degree flexion at heel strike. Continuing to extend during the rest of the stance phase. It reaches 10 degrees of hyperextension after toe off. The hip flexes to 55 degrees flexion in the late swing phase. Before the end of the swing phase, the hip extends to 50 degrees to prepare for heel strike. The knee flexes as the heel strikes, then flexes again during the loading response. The knee begins to extend after this and reaches 40 degrees flexion just before toe off. During the swing phase and in the initial part of the float period, the knee flexes to reach maximum flexion during mid-swing, and then the knee prepares for heel strike. Plantar flexion happens almost immediately, continuing throughout the rest of the stance phase and as it enters swing phase. The ankle then dorsiflexes throughout the swing phase to 10 degrees in the late stage, and the lower limb medially rotates. The foot pronates at heel strike. Lateral rotation of the lower limb stance leg begins as the swing leg passes by the stance leg and in mid stance position. And again, absorption, propulsion, toe, swing, terminal, contact. Never in your life have you been so singularly engaged by the biomechanics of your body's breakneck pace. Never could you conceive that such an undisciplined surge of magic would be so abruptly beaten back by the limits of the physical form. The world around you is blurred and it's breaking down into its component parts. Not boulder, bush, and road, but obstacle, interference, and opening. This continues until the burning in your chest rises to an unbearable discomfort. And suddenly things begin to slingshot back into your periphery focus. Tension building like you're reaching the maximum capacity of a longbow's draw until finally, there is a release. Somehow, despite your accelerated advance, you fall backward instead of forward, down into a seated position where you remain in stunned silence for a few seconds until you hear movement in the brush behind you. TC emerges breathing quite hard and puts his hand on his hips to steady himself. You don't know exactly how long you've been running for, but not a hundred feet or so from where you sit, the trees are thinning and familiar sounds are heard. Horses, wagons, conversation, and laughter. It's detention pass, harboring the bustle of the late afternoon. Close if you want it to be, but far if you don't. A moment here alone before anyone new might lay eyes upon you. And TCU come up. <sighs> Miss Morna. We have to. We have to get help. We should alert them. Yeah. She's going to pick herself up if, and... If you want to take a moment, will I still find you here? Yeah, yes. For the last 100, 150 feet... 
he burst out into detention pass. He looked to your right and laughed, and business as usual. No one's heard the sound of the alarm, heard the sounds of, of warning or, or fear, and people are leading horses, sort of driving at the front of wagons, but as you kind of come through, a lot of heads turn in your direction just because you're out of breath. Yeah. You like have leaves yeah. and things stuck to your clothing. Some blood. As yeah, I, I a little bit of slices. the weariness of combat that you wore on, that you wear on yourself. And a couple people in sort of green and uh, gray kind of turn. Trouble. Trouble at the crossing. Sea what? creatures, Sahuagans. That last group of prisoners being taken across. One of them summoned them upon you and your fellow. They could all be dead by now. Shit. At the mention of the prisoners, that immediately sparks recognition. It's obvious that they came through here. They must have, you know, passed by certain checkpoints. And immediately one of the uh, clinkers sort of hops on a nearby horse, sort of saddles up, and he turns the horse in the direction further east toward Fort Contrition. Yeah. <sighs> Shit. <sighs> we'll call for help. Don't go back out there. You tell anyone you pass to steer clear of the bridge. What's your name? So we can follow up with questions later. <coughs> Welker. Welker. I'm Private Finch. Thank you for your service. And he whips the horse around. Goes down the pass. As he's moving down, he passes by a couple um, other clinkers that are sort of doing just their patrols up and down. And you can see them take those, you saw them on the way out when you were with Ace, uh, like signal horns that are down by your belt. And it seems like the guy yells a couple things to his left, to his right, and they go, they're sort of a rally of horns making its way all the way down to uh, Fort Contrition to kind of get there even before the courier arrives, the horseman arrives. Take a minute here. Take my hat off. What the fuck? No. What the fuck are we gonna do with her? You crazy fucking bitch. Ingratiate yourself. She is worth what? God! Ah! See everybody kind of going yeah. off into the distance there. You can see the clinkers are moving away from you, and some people are passing by. You're speaking quietly to yourself by the side of the road, but someone kind of leading a horse just kind of gives you sort of a sympathetic nod because you you know you look like you've taken a couple of good swipes. So he, he doesn't sort of prod anything. You don't look like you're so injured that you yeah. need assistance. So nobody like walks up to you, but mm -hmm. people pass by, sort of collect myself and go back to where I was. He was gone for a few minutes there, not too long, but... Um, uh... As soon as he leaves, she's gonna sort of like sit and time is passing in a way that isn't, doesn't feel that familiar. And when she finally sort of gets a grip, she's gonna st like just sort of hold herself and, and pray. Um, in dark, there's light. Call out, they'll guide you. In fear, there's love. Worship to remind you. The gods are near, whisper they'll hear. You praise and reward you. Prove them your faith. The gods will show your, you the way. She's gonna kind of get up and sort of wander out towards TC. Slow steps in the direction of detention pass. When you return, you find Morna standing now. She was sort of seated, a little lost in her mind there for a moment. But as you return, she's gotten up. She looks a little more composed after sort of a mad dash from the bridge. Cavalry is on its way. Good. 
Mr. Welker, let me explain. I don't know if I want you to. No, you must. You. And I understand. It was done unto me. When Haskell, he called down a cleric upon us. The village was wiped, but I was gone. I was making the supply run. And when I returned to the ash and the bone, and the smoke, there were these colorful mists, and and I felt this magic, and all my life I, I have only wanted to be obedient. And that is why I have to find him. He can release you from this. He did it to me. He, he can undo it. He must. You know that for a fact. No, I don't fucking know anything about this. I don't know how this fucking works. <sighs> Only that I don't want it. I can't imagine anyone would. That cleric in the cusp. No, I don't. You don't know. He could have been after you, but you don't know. I don't know. Tizi, I... <sighs> if you do not wish to associate with me, I completely understand. You may tell the others that I... Cheetah cards, I'm a liar, an adulteress, a, I, a thief. But do not tell them, do not tell anyone, please. I beg of you. I beg of you, Mr. Welker. He has to fix it. Or... Otherwise, you are stuck here for the rest of your days, aren't you? More of my soul. Dangerous times. Proximity to magic is dangerous. I understand if you don't wish to associate with me. <laughs> dangerous information. Yes. See that you are just as scared as I am. And I do feel sorry for you. I will continue to help you in your endeavors if you wish it. She's gonna go up and just sort of give him a big hug, but she's got the breastplate on, so it's it's kind of crushing a little bit, but... TC stiffs for a second and, like, waits for a pulse, <laughs> like, that that stuff that he saw earlier, and just... Sorry. Return it. Sorry. Do not apologize. I can't imagine the weight of such a thing. Has this happened before? This... Not like that. No? No. I have fought to keep it down and uh, it seems to be harder and harder. I imagine 
know how much you saw as we fled, but they were in dire straits. I, there is a good chance that no one survives that bridge other than sea creatures and prisoners. Does that help you rest a little easier? No. Innocent men will die. <laughs> I wish it didn't come to me at all. Let's but get if, back. Yeah. But if what? If there were no other witnesses but you, I would be... She sort of looks up to the sky, thankful. I think we could both use a true night's rest. Yes. Let's go. Make our way back. Gonna start a slow little march back to Detention Pass. Um, and speaking of, uh, reading my notes ahead of time, I need you to make a, con a constitution saving throw against exhaustion at this point in the day. Oh, yeah, you Having not it? rested the night before. Oh, and more nice human adventure. 14. 14, that'll do it for now. So you might have to make increasingly difficult ones as the day continues okay. and so on. For now, you're able to stave off the effects of his out. He's, He's like, He's like <laughs> Yeah, as you <laughs> sort of the adrenaline course through you enough to get you all the way to here to detention pass, mm -hmm. but now that there's a moment here where you settle a little bit, you can feel the weight of that starting to set in. So uh, you definitely now, know that exhaustion would be I'd have disadvantage on ability like, checks and attack rolls is the first oh level. Of oh god. Oh, god. Really should act nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. What's left when the lion falls? is only the quiet patter of paws disappearing behind ridges and into the dense thickets. Wolves without an alpha, scattered and undisciplined. Now, in time, a new leader of the pack will emerge, but for now, you've eased the burden of those traveling to and from, toiling away this part of the downwheel. Welcome news for the Merc Hall and anyone that might be branching out from the relative safety of Brunkalo Valley. Ilion inspects his armor, which now features a collage of parallel scratches to go with the dents and dings from a previous fall. His effective use of the stitched metal splints making the difference between a future trip to the blacksmith and a future trip to the morgue. <laughs> the fleece mane's hide is marred and stained in several places, cuts from the greatsword, punctures from the javelins, and acidic erosion from the generous injection of poison but several large patches can certainly still be salvaged, and clumps of fur are plentiful, ripe for the plucking, especially if Maeve has no qualms about purity regarding any red or green discoloration. So you take stock here, you can hear sort of <laughs> Y'all know how to skin a lion? Uh, I've never done a lion, but uh, maybe? How are we doing? I, uh, is everyone okay? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm glad, just glad I didn't take this in yet to get it fixed. Um, I, not great, but got the blood pumping. That was fun. It was good. Uh, you okay, Doxley? Yeah, I'm fine. Um, Alien, if you want to help me skin this thing, Kate, I'm sure that the Merc Hall's gonna want some kind of proof that we got the uh, the wolves or maybe the alphas, so if you wanna take his greatsword and get the heads. I was thinking heads too. All right. Okay. Sure, uh, be careful there. She's uh, great. Anyway. Okay. Yep, there you go. I got it, I got um, it. Would you just tell her to be careful with like a three foot long blade? Well, yes, but that's my special three foot oh, long blade. Not to I'll harm yourself, well. but to treat Great the sword. sword. Great to treat sword. the sword <laughs> well. Got it. Yeah, she's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll follow your lead. Um, if you want to do most of it, I'll just cut around where you start the incisions. Yeah, just I want your second set of hands, is all. Yeah, cool. Great. 
You can do so. So basically kind of stretching it in a couple places so you can get at the joints. Uh, give me a survival check with advantage with Ilian helping you. Yippee! Cool. And then as we're doing that, I'm gonna mm-hmm. have a private word with Ilian. You can. Right. As, I'm, well, I'm heading over. As Kate walks yeah. away to the wolves, you can hear sort of a... <laughs> sort of an overhead one after the other to kind of get through the head of the wolf. There's also going to be some quiet, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, I'm sorry about this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Um, I rolled a 10. Okay. It, it, part of the difficulty is merely the damage state that it's in. Sort of professional trappists will attempt to not damage the furs. So, but you guys were, you know, fighting for your life in a sense. So there's a lot of parts of it that are damaged well beyond repair. You're able to carve out a few patches of it. So it's not gonna like make a whole pelt that you could wear on your back and look really cool. But there's a few good sections of its fur. And in addition to that, there's, you could rip out plenty of clumps of the hair, which is what uh, Maeve had on her list, the, the, the fur, the main fur specifically. Great, I'll throw that in my bag. So we'll say three, uh, two medium uh, sort of fleece mane pelts and one large, and that's not the whole pelt, but like chunks of pelt. So two medium pieces, one large piece. Okay. That you sort of cut around the poison and the blood and some of the slashes. Great. Um, so as we're carving, mm-hmm. if Kate is mostly out of earshot, mm-hmm. <laughs> can't hear us over your sorries. If you guys remember the battle map, there's like that little rocky ridge that the yeah, lion yeah. died on. So you guys are up there and then she's down, oh, not at the lake, but further, you know, off. So she's a right. decent distance away, at least 70, 80 feet away. From you. Uh, quietly. All right, Hill. I tried your method to get information out of Kate. If you don't know exactly what she's trying to do, I'm gonna have to resort to methods you aren't gonna like. So tell me, or that's what's happening. Yeah, I think, I think she's down with the plan of showing us the book or whatever, and I'll help to glean what exactly she's doing, but uh, why? You said it was powder. What is it exactly? I didn't get a good enough look. I don't know if it's something I'm familiar with. Um. It, w- Doxley, w- what is this about? Is why the sudden need to know about Kate? Because she's gonna help me do what I came here to do. And I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna leave. I leave Alien to finish collecting sort of the last chunk of fur there, or the last part of the, the skin. You're able to get the heads. You no know, check required. I mean, you're literally just you know. Are you... <laughs> a whack and whip. <laughs> so, do I have like enough like cloth or anything in my bag where I could like bundle them up? Sure. I don't want the, them to be bleeding. Yes. Yeah. You will say you have some. You know, at least a couple of spare satchels that you can okay. some drawstring satchels that right. they're going to get a little damp as the blood sort of comes out, but it'll make it back to town certainly, and certainly you'd be able to show it to the Merc Hall. Okay, I'm going to take I'm gonna take the satchels and put the heads in the satchels and just be like, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Time up. Head back Someone to the Someone watching from a distance is like, this person's a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy, she says as she puts the head. Yeah. Dragging him over. Good? Yeah, you guys? Great. Oh. I need my sword back. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, feel, I feel naked without her. It's always on my back, so. Yeah. So she's a little bloody now. Sorry about that. That's a normal thing. Is anybody opposed to taking a quick rest here before we head on back? Oh. If, you, if you need to, that's fine. I suppose I'm in no rush. I wouldn't mind it. Okay, great. Let's do it. So, yeah. Have a moment to catch your breath. You can apply now the effects of a short rest. Yay. Key points back, maneuvers back, or superiority yeah. dice back. Yeah. You can choose to use hit dice if you wish, if you need. I will. Absolutely. You can use up to half of what you have, right? Uh, your max? You can use as many. Up to your max. You can use as many oh. as you want, yeah. And you can roll them one at a time. You don't have to declare it the ahead of Oh, I see, I but see. At the end of the rest, you'll get one back. Yeah, because it's one fourth of yeah. them rounded down. Uh, Great. Yeah, I think that's right. I can get my I get my key points back, right? You get your key yeah. points back? Yes! <laughs> I'll just use one, but then I go back up to two, because I was at two, right? Your short rest abilities come back, your healing surge, and whatnot. Okay. As you are resting, 
We will turn back over to Detention Pass for a moment. I rolled another one on your deck. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy. Uh, when you <laughs> departed the company of Doxley and Ilian after Ace left as well, Whoa. you thought you'd be downright delighted to see the eastern limits of Brunk Hollow coming into view. There's money to collect from EOD, deep gnome blood to hand over to Maeve, some promising leads to follow up on after rifling through what was left behind in the Haskell's room. Now, however, the events at the crossing have muddied whatever kind of merriment you might have felt. Not only was the attack a rather grim scene without a happy ending, there's a cloud of discomfort kind of hovering between the two of you. Not aversion or hostility, but just a disquietude, a sort of an intimate facet of your being exposed in such a public way. You're passing beyond the first row of houses in Brunk Hollow is timed alongside the return of several mining groups, some independent ones, as well as some belonging to Bison. It's quite noisy in the thoroughfare and you're quickly swallowed up by the crowd around you. You felt rather exposed kind of in Detention Pass and especially in the downwheel, but as soon as you get within the town limits, suddenly you're just one of the crowd, people all around you, nobody, a couple of people kind of give you a sideways glance because you got some blood on you and, but people go out hunting, that's not, unless they had a reason to, for concern, they, they wouldn't necessarily call you out on it. Adding to the traffic here, there are some new faces at the open market that's right there kind of in front of you, right in front of Paramount Lodgings. There's a pair of popular stalls that are coming close to becoming a full on obstruction here in the thoroughfare edible amber-brown confections that might be some kind of maple lollipop or taffy that someone, a pair of, it looks like a, um, a man and a woman, possibly a couple, are selling these at the open market, a pair, of, a pair of gnomes here. At this juncture, you look to each other and you kind of have a shared thought without even having to say it. Is this the moment to leave each other's company for a time? Or will you sort of power through whatever lingering apprehension remains to embrace a shared task? You're just right here, kind of just at the open market, right in front of Paramount Lodgings. Uh, and what time about thereabouts is it? Uh, Has it getting back about five o'clock. 5 p.m.? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Damn, that was a long day. Yep. Uh, all right, all right. Um, well, I've got to at least make a stop at Maze before she closes <clears throat> up shop for the night. I don't know if you've got any plans for this evening. I have to go to Good as Gold uh, with these goggles. Well, I could use and a, to get another healing potion. I could use a bit more ammunition myself. Uh, could you pick, uh, pick up a couple cases of bolts for me? Of course. I'll give you two gold. I think last time it was like a gold for ten I think that was right. bolts. Sure. Uh, two cases of bolts, please. You got it. Uh, you wouldn't want to try to check out the goblin tent with me later, would you? I think perhaps not too much later in the daytime. We should do it. You mean sooner rather than later? Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> As in, I gotta run upstairs and then to Maeve's, but within the hour. Yes. All right. Shall we meet in the lobby of the Paramount? Sure. Yes. Thank you. So you're both heading to Paramount at the moment? You said you're running yeah, upstairs? Yeah, I have to go up to, straight. To, to and are you room. heading straight uh, there? Where I'm are you just going to go straight to Good as Gold. <laughs> okay, uh, heading straight to Good as Gold. Uh, give me a perception check as you pass by sort of the crowded open market here. Seven. Seven. <laughs> you are able to see that the, the two people peddling candies, it's a pair of gnomes, man and a woman, and they have these kind of, f not fancy, but detailed embroidered tunics that are very flashy as well as their presentation. Each time they sort of get a payment from someone in the crowd, they ladle a generous spoonful of like a boiled syrup. They have like a vat of syrup off to the side that has sort of a warm heated syrup. They take a nice spoonful of that and they pour it onto, there's like a wooden bench and they pour it onto what looks like incredibly a fresh patch of snow that has been sort of pressed and compacted <laughs> onto this bench. They pour it across the bench and then they take a little wooden stick and they slap it down and they <laughs> roll up the little maple taffy and then they hand it to the person in the crowd. And the whole thing has a little bit of pageantry to it. They sort of swirl and then, ha ha, they hand <laughs> it to the person. And you can see people sort of greedily reaching for them. 
And it strikes you, the elevation around Brunk Hollow is generally high, and it can get very cold, especially at night, but you haven't heard about any recent snowfall. So your first thought is that these people must have sourced this from the higher mountains of the Upweald. As you go into the Upweald, the elevation rises very, very quickly, and there might be snow kind of as you get further up there. And that seems like a very dangerous trip to take just to make fancy candies. Like that thought sort of strikes you. So possibly an interesting pair here, these two gnomes. You're not sure exactly how they're sourcing the snow, where they're getting it from, how they're getting it back, but there certainly isn't any easily accessible snow in the immediate area. So they're going somewhere to get this, which is interesting to you. <laughs> TC, as you walk into the Paramount, very little has changed since you left from here this morning. The kitchen is mostly crowded. And there's people coming in and out of the washroom, wet hair, towels draped over their shoulders, travelers and prospectors kind of getting clean after a busy day on the road or in the quarries. At this hour, the light is coming through the Paramount's windows in a very pleasing way, a very warm yet vibrant illumination that complements the lanterns on the walls rather than them fighting the darkness. Mr. Clemens is at the desk, but he's facing away from the front door. He seems to be slotting envelopes and small packages into little cubby holes that are designated for each room in the hotel. Mail for people who've been staying here long enough to receive correspondence from the outside. As he works, he hums a quiet tune, something kind of plodding and soulful that causes him to absentmindedly kind of rock back and forth as he does. And give me a uh, perception check. Uh, 22. 22. He's humming it and you recognize the tune and you recognize it because you not only heard it rather recently, but heard it during a rather startling event. It seems like it's follow your sorrow to Brunk Hollow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't tell him. I think you did when I wasn't there, right? Tell him what? Um, tell Clemens what the guy was saying before I killed him. What, what, the... I told him the prayer, yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, so sorry, yeah, sorry. no, it's okay. He's just sort of humming that tune absentmindedly as he continues his work. Mm -hmm. At one point during his sorting, and I'll put this in with that perception check as well, whatever name kind of printed on the exterior prompts kind of a wave of recognition. He sort of gets to the next letter and, hmm. And then he puts down the rest of the pile, like he has a number of envelopes, he puts down the rest of them, takes a small blade from a drawer, and he slices it open. Mm -hmm. And then he starts to read, kind of. I didn't see what it said on the front? No. No? Yeah, there was some writing on it, but. Okay. And you can see him reading. He's not like hiding yeah. it. He's not like trying yeah. it. It's possible it was addressed to him. He right. sort of gets to that and he reads. Can I, I'll come by. And as, he, as you're sort of walking up, you see him and. <laughs> Good news. <laughs> Mr. Welker, welcome back. Yes, yeah, just a. Uh, just a message from the outside. Strange that it feels so far away when the physical distance proves otherwise. Mm. Welcome back. And he sort of puts the letter in the door. I didn't, I couldn't catch like uh, any words or-, or Word, Nah, he, he was holding it sort of okay. facing himself yeah. and then he slips it into a drawer there. Um, any correspondence for myself? Uh, yes. Um, I am afraid I have a mixed report regarding your letters that you gave to me this morning. The envelope headed for Peron was accepted without complaint, mm. but as for the local one, well, Ms. Narvos insisted that you come to see and see it yourself. She was perplexed, as you might expect, as to why you would not simply pass off the letter on your own. I think she wished to hear it directly from the mouth of the man who penned it. My apologies. I, it's all right. I, I, I'll take it up with her, I suppose. Courier must know the business of everyone whose letters they carry. I imagine it's fairly uncommon, even with a growing town such as this, for someone to have a courier take a letter to someone who is merely a couple of houses away. I told you I was on my way out the door on a timed mission. I relayed that information to her as well. All right. She still got the letter then? Uh, yes, I believe it is in her possession. <laughs> well, now it is going to be late, isn't it? And I'll kind of turn and 
uh, before you go, I hope your collaboration with Miss Adams Rogue proved fruitful, not to pry. Oh my God, it was too deep. Mm. Yes. Um, when she came back into town, she was carting an injured man. <laughs> and I feared the worst for one of you. <laughs> Relieved I was to find that it was not one of my tenants that found themselves in a bad way. No, no, we all made it out of the downwheel, all right. And he sort of looks. Give me an insight, Jack. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> um, 15? 15. He doesn't say anything else, but it's obvious to you that he recognized the man she was bringing back Ooh. into town. Okay. And that he sort of is almost waiting to see if you say anything more about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's a yeah. known person. Yeah. You know, if, if he knew who it was, that's an, a figure of hmm. note. Um... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Head back outside. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Are you heading? Up yeah, there? upstairs. Oh, heading upstairs. Uh, yeah, because I put. I think I. Uh, you had said that I, I put the the plungers away upstairs. I'm gonna yes, the mine. syringes. Yeah, the yeah. Syringes. You head back upstairs. As you head back upstairs, one thing that you notice very easily it's it's certainly not being hidden or anything. There seems to be that the door to room number two on the second floor is cracked open. The room that you broke into yeah. earlier. And if you listen for a moment, give me a perception check. Yeah. Uh, uh oh. Perception, 15. 15. You sort of, just before you turn to go up the stairs, you just give a little lean in that direction, tilt up an ear, and you hear, <laughs> and sounds of like, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like my old buddy, old pal. <laughs> it sounds like uh, it sounds like Kenzo from Kenzo. the kitchen, who also does some cleaning and things. And at one point, the door kind of uh, cracks open a little more, and and some sheets go out the door. It seems that the room is being it's getting turned, cleaned out, okay. turned over. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Not in just in time. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the way upstairs. Turn yeah. back upstairs to your room. We'll go back out to the fields. We'll bounce around a little bit back and forth here. You finish up taking a breath, taking a moment to yourself, sort of treating any superficial wounds, cleaning off armor, making sure there isn't sort of blood stains on weapons, hands, face. A little renewed strength. Sort of pick yourselves up, look around. During your rest, you sort of, there was a little unease at the beginning of it, just making sure that you know, no animals returned as you were sort of letting your guard down, but they don't. They seem to have retreated back into, uh, Dale had mentioned in his scouting report that there's a number of these burrows that they kind of retreat back into and they might have sort of hidden back there until they can sort of pick a new alpha of the pack as it were. So. Well, do you think uh, this is enough for Maeve? It's about all we could really get. I have a feeling that's more than enough. Oh, great. All right. Um, to the bridge then? Yeah. Oh. Gotta get to the Merc Hall first, drop off these heads. Flip the sacks up. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, and then um, I guess I'll I'll probably head to Maeve's after that. Cool. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing Maeve too. It'll be it'll be a good time. Oh, you're heading to Maeve's as well? Do you I am. do you want do you want to go together? Sure. Let's go together. Okay. Okay. So we'll Strength we'll... in numbers, I guess. Totally. Uh, so we'll drop off at the Merc Hall, Hall and then Maeve. go to Maeve. Great. That sounds great to me. Did you want to come with, or did you? If you don't mind, I had some other errands. I wouldn't mind. Okay. I don't have a reason to go to either of those, so mm. if that's all right. Cool. Okay. Um, when you do go to the Merc Hall, can you give credit to that man? Yeah, Dale? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will. Thank you. I'll so, if you didn't ask for some compensation, I'll figure out how much Sure, I just yeah, a I'll little figure. percentage. I mean, he scouted for us. Yeah. He basically used his plan. And we weren't sure how much we were getting paid for this per person or it was a lump sum. Yeah, unclear. Okay, well, I'll figure it out when we get there. Okay. Couple of gold, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you think's fair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Great. Onwards. Sorry, All right. Toward the bridge, then. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, how was your? You were meeting with that strange fellow that you said mm. was acting weird. 
Uh. He, he's a little less weird now. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I think he's fine. He just, he's up to his own business, as everybody is in Brung Hollow. Right. Well, I'm glad that that meeting was, turned out well for you. Yeah. Oh, I just turned along. Of your excursions out of town to date, this return trip feels perhaps the most triumphant in a way, at least in the sense of having accomplished exactly what you set out to do without significant kind of setback or deviation. Complicated feelings about Spencer Stott and Chase Langford aside, the downwheel has tested you and you've risen to the challenge. On your way to the clinker crossing, there are long stretches where barely a word is spoken between you, not for any ill will or awkwardness, but simply because you find yourselves deep in thought about the company that you seek when you return to town. Finally, you have something tangible to offer Maeve. You have reputation to cultivate at the Merc Hall. You have time to let the events of yesterday settle you so you can speak, clear-minded, to Gujek Claiborne and the Monteros. The group's preoccupation makes the walk upriver go by very quickly. When you arrive at the bridge, it's not quite what you expected. It being still under construction, you assumed that there would be at least a handful of laborers, laborers toiling away. But every figure that you see currently on the bridge is armed and armored with green and gray tabards over shining metal. And it isn't long after that that you see why. Littering the ground from bank to bank are a few dozen corpses. Some of them poorly outfitted, some of them clearly deceased guards, and some of them aquatic in nature. Webbed hands and feet, fringes down the arms and legs, and crude tridents stacked with other weapons in a pile nearby. A grisly fight took place here. And you'd guess that the people still standing were not a part of that fight, judging by the unsullied appearance of their attire. There's no bloodstains, dents, they don't seem out of breath. A few men and women are using some of those sort of shoddy tridents and some pitchforks to slide bodies off the side of the bridge. Where they hit the surface with a smacking splash before disappearing beneath the rapids. If you're taking a look at it, it seems like they're not pushing off uh, bodies that are also dressed in kind of green and gray attire. There's some sort of very basic tunics that look like they could have been prisoners and also some of those more aquatic bodies that they're... So this is what you see when you approach the bridge. Elliot. And I'm gonna start walking pretty quickly over to uh, the bridge. Sure. Um, so. Like scanning for DC and Morna. Okay, give me a uh, perception check. Uh, eight. Eight, you do not see them at all. A number of bodies, even in your approach, are being pushed off the side. It's entirely possible that that happened and you didn't see it. So you're, you're definitely very much arriving at the tail end of whatever happened here. Uh, nearest soldier? Guard. Sure, yeah. there's, a, there's like a crowd of armored, kind of uh, obviously clinker, tabarded combatants uh, sort of there on the bridge there that are all kind of mumbling, talking. You know. What happened? Eh, you here to use the bridge? Come on then. No, 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 we had friends pass through here. What happened? <sighs> Two humans. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Second, take the bodies and put them away. He kind of comes over to you. You said you knew someone who passed through here? Yes. Yes. Man and a woman. We're still assessing the situation. Sea spawn popped up and they ambushed a chain gang of prisoners moving to one of the mines. Now, we're not sure if there was a particular target in mind yet. I ain't trying to be rude, but we're a little busy trying to account for the bodies and whatnot. We've got just the one survivor so far, one of our deputies. When things was looking grim, he dove off the side, swam to shore before meeting back up with the rescue team. And we ain't finished, but we're definitely missing people. Whether they alive or just fell into the river, it's hard to tell. At least one of them's ours and we've got three prisoners unaccounted for. Now you're welcome to take a quick look at the bodies left here on the bridge but do not linger and do not touch anything. We are still looking into what happened and what we can do about it. 
Doxley is gonna scan like the banks and the bridge for a wet and more distressed looking guard. Somebody that was in the water, somebody that looks bloodied or like beat up. So yes, uh, the banks? L yeah, or, like any part of the area. Sure, yeah. it seems like the person he's referencing, you sort of look up over his shoulder and there was like a semicircle of clinkers and as this one who's talking to you left that semicircle, there's now kind of a gap there in the little semicircle of people. And they were all facing inward toward a man sitting on a stool that looks thoroughly beaten to a pulp. His armor is dented. He's got blood kind of running down from the corner of his eye down to his chin. You can see bruises kind of up and down his neck. Pieces of his tunic are torn. He's got a weapon kind of by his side that like the hilt of his sword is dented. Like this guy was clearly in a fight. This presumably jumped off the bridge at one point to escape as was sort of told to you, relayed to you by this person. It's a, uh, it's a human man sort of in his late 20s shoulder length reddish brown hair that's still very damp from having been in the water. He has matching tattoos on both shoulders that are only visible now that he's removed some of his armor. Like with our standard sort of set of armor, you wouldn't be able to see them. And the tattoos are two daggers pointing in opposite directions. And that's on both shoulders. So two daggers on the left shoulder, two daggers on the right pointing in opposite directions. Uh, give me a history check. Uh, anyone who's looking oh. can give me a history check. <laughs> I'm looking. Oh, oh, I'm at a those delts. <laughs> 18. Oh, let's go. Oh, whoa. 16. Dirty 20. 20. Hey, oh. Okay. Right. So Evidently a very recognizable <laughs> tattoo. I know that. You guys do see the tattoo, and this belongs to, um, it's a tattoo that denotes like a merchant guild in Unesia. It's like a sort of popular traveling merchant guild that sells items. And you recall, even those of you who aren't sort of from Unesia or spent much time there, the symbol is recognizable to you because that merchant guild has an unsavory reputation, uh, more in the sense of like dealing black market goods sometimes. So they, they, it's possible, if this guy's a clinker now, it's definitely possible that he has left that very much behind. Mm -hmm. But when he was there, like they wouldn't, they probably would not allow that kind of person to be a, a guard here. I but but uh, possibly a time passed when he was a part of said merchant guild. Doxy's gonna take a nice strong stride like right, through right you. all the clinkers. You're heading towards past it. that half circle. Immediately right as you start to walk in that direction. No, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Is there no. any way that I can like <clears throat> swat his hand away and keep fucking going? Uh, you may attempt to do so. Give me an athletics check. <laughs> <laughs> athletics, mm -hmm. 18. 18. You swat and push past that guy and you're just up to the guard who's sort of, breathing heavy and you, you can say one thing and you feel hands on your shoulders and your weight. Like people are about to okay. pounce on you from all directions. All right, uh, as soon as I reach him, yep. man in a hat and a woman with big hair. Uh, and everyone kind of grabs you and, <laughs> and pulls you yeah, back. Yeah, I can't wrestle get him. Back, get off get me. Back. Where are they? They're gone. And everyone kind of turns. They ran. Toward detention pass, I told him to get help. And everyone kind of looks around. I need you to keep moving. Certainly. Thank you. Doc, let's go. I'll leave. That's just nice long. They give you kind of a, not a like mean push, but a like, like clearly ushering you across in the other direction there. Okay. They're okay. Everything's okay. <laughs> Kate's gonna take her hat off and like hold it to her chest as we finish walking across the bridge. They're still walking past a couple bodies. They haven't gotten all the way past down the bridge. So there's like prisoner here, prisoner there, sea spawn here, sea spawn there. You have to step over a couple of them to get to the far side. Would we know if, since we've worked a lot with like sea spawn creatures, if they get provoked by that kind of activity, where if there's just like passerbys going over their territory, like is that behavior that's normal? Give me a um, nature check with advantage. You've dealt with sea spawn before. Nature. Mm -hmm. Seven. Yeah, yeah, hard to recall exactly. There's probably people from the Gorion on that <laughs> would know that a lot better than you, but you'd. Lessons that didn't quite uh, stick there. <laughs> 
So you guys get to, you're sort of, again, moving across the bridge is pretty long. There's another set of two guards that are on the south bank that are clearly there to, again, like the other guy did, keep people away from the scene and usher them across if they need to quickly move. And they're having kind of just a quiet conversation with each other. All of you give me perception checks. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. mm. oh ho, ho. 25. 21. <laughs> Doxy's steaming mad. Yeah. Some yeah, yeah. wet willy when they were grabbing her, so she's like, no. <laughs> she's like, what do I remember about sea spawn? <laughs> yeah. 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 But as you guys are passing by, they're having a conversation very quietly, like clearly trying not to be overheard, but you pick up on one mm. thing. Mm. It sounds like they're talking about someone named Marcel. M M A R C E L L. <laughs> and in addition to that, you also hear them, what you think, in Ilian especially, you think you hear them say the word Aquan, like in reference to the language. So like okay. implying that that person was speaking it or something to that effect, which you immediately sort of connect to C-Spawn speak Aquan, they can communicate yeah. in such a way. So that you just hear that. As we walk past, um, uh, pardon. We really need you to keep moving. I'm aware, I'm on my way. Um, you said, I didn't mean to overhear you. Uh, Marcel. No, I didn't. All right. And I heard no, a I didn't. win. <laughs> I heard it too. Thank you, Kate. I, yeah, I heard it too. No. <laughs> as, as someone who is a sea elf, is there something that I can do to help? You tell me. Great. Have a nice day. You as well. Stay safe. As you guys are walking past, you can kind of, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear him. <laughs> getting fired. Oh my God. All right. He just, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What was that all about? I just heard uh, a name and something to do with Aquin something. And I thought if there was something I could do to alleviate the terribleness that has happened, but uh, apparently they weren't interested or hiding something. You think they were discussing, they said that there was someone missing, right? Uh, a few people unaccounted for. Could be something there, but could also be a stretch. Something to keep in mind. It's not, I don't know if it's our business anyways, but. I wonder if Niall would know more about the behavior of these creatures. Probably would. If you're curious, I'll leave that to you. That was gruesome. Yeah. We need to find out if TC and Morna are okay. Luckily, it sounds like they made it out. Maybe not unscathed, but should be okay. Are you okay? This is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's definitely the most, uh, like, humanoid violence you've seen yeah. since you've been here. I mean, that wagon got sort of shot during your approach to Brunk Hollow, but most of the violence you've seen has been, you know, dangerous creatures of the wilds. That's yeah. sort of it this very sort of grim, overwhelming scene of, of death around you is, it's different. Yeah. Well, no point in sticking around. Mm -hmm. You guys continue on. We'll swing back into town here for a moment. <laughs> Morna heads through town and finds her way back to good as gold. Which at this point in the day is not terribly busy. Uh, tends to be a little busier in the morning as people are gathering supplies before they head out to the dig sites or their various forms of work. You notice that as you approach, because it's again sort of in the past 5 p.m. towards 6 p.m., the noise, there's a lot of noise coming from next door, the music box that's picking up steam very quickly. A lot of people kind of flooding through the doors there. And there's clearly a couple musicians that are 
playing their hearts out next door. And as you're entering through the door, you can see Bailey and Dustin sort of almost simultaneously look toward their left side wall, where it's like, you can hear bling, 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 like lutes and <laughs> flutes. And they're like clearly a professional, but irritated that yeah. so much sound is kind of coming through <laughs> in this particular moment. And they both look to that direction, but then they kind of hear you come in. Ah, oh, Miss Ishti, good to see you again. Oh. Um, several things. I have these, and she's gonna walk up to their tall table <laughs> and hand up the... Oh, yes, um, just this morning, Miss um, Tyrone came in to request a few items for the next wagon, and uh, these were on it. How did you get these before we were able to bring them? Oh, uh, Miss Adams Rogue gave it to me. Oh. She's no need for them, but they would help me enormously. You can see they are damaged. I wondered if you couldn't repair it. Yes, we could I think that. Mr. Welker would still appreciate a, the night goggles, so it is not, you know, un... It's good to have. You can see more than it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Um, where did, where did you, you said Miss Adams Rogue gave these to you? Yes, I helped her with a job this morning. Mm, yes. Um, <laughs> I don't want to make you uncomfortable when you obviously are very tired, mm -hmm. but we put numbers on the bottom of these uh. so we know who we gave them to. Oh. So it seems that if you got it from Miss Adams Rogue, and I'm not saying that you didn't, maybe you didn't, but I'm not saying that. <laughs> it seems that these belong to another person that I would want to make sure that they don't want them before I bequeath them to you. Okay, that seems fair to me. It, just because I don't wish to, to have the appearance of theft. Yeah. Well, I think she got them off of Spencer Stott. Yes, I didn't want to say the name. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know, but I, we sold these to Spencer Stott a, a few weeks ago. I believe he's been apprehended, and so I think that apprehended by the be clinkers or by Ms. Adams Rogue, oh. by Mr. Bison. So I don't think he'll want them back. Oh, okay. That's just <laughs> my personal feeling for uh, it. But you're <laughs> welcome to ask. I completely understand, Mr. Sampson. I trust you, Miss Teague. Okay. <laughs> uh, you have a business to run. I completely. We will it. start the repairs, and in the meantime, I'm sure we're going to run into Miss Adams Rogue. She comes in here. We will just make sure that she got them in a way that is uh, suitable. <laughs> totally. Two more things. Do you have a small dagger that I could keep in my boot? And also, can I get two health potions? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> let's get you a small boot dagger. <laughs> um, we have ones that fit into a nice leather sheath on the boot that you attach to the boot. No. Or I one. Concealed. Uh, yes, uh, so there's a, an interior pouch uh, that. Um, you want that one. <laughs> okay, uh, you seem to know exactly what you want. It's just two gold for the dagger. Great, she's gonna give him the mm. two gold. Thank you, um, and a third thing you said. Uh, health potions. Uh, it's health potions. Do you have any, um, like buying in bulk discounts uh, for if, health potions? If you were to buy perhaps 10 at, le uh, uh, at a time. And what would that, cost me. Well, normally they run for 60 in Broncolo a piece and we'd be willing to bump that down to 50, which is a more standard city price if you bought them at least 10. Okay. Uh, I'll get two. <laughs> <laughs> two, yes. Of course. Brings over the potions. Do you have a punch card or something? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> that's not really what bulk means. No, I just mean in general. Like after I buy 10, I get a punch card. And then I'll get 10 gold off of one in the future. Um, the next time you're here, we'll see if we can find a, what did you call, punch, punch card? Punch card, yes. I went, there was a, oh, no. <laughs> there was a store. Usually associated more with uh, baked goods <laughs> <laughs> and not yes, and, and I, not healing potions, which um, yes, I don't I, mean to demean no, the profession, but healing potions are rarer than croissants. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it might be a good business tactic. It's interesting. 
<laughs> She's going to hand him 120 gold. He slides over Ooh. the healing potion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, we'll get right away. I, I, no money collected for the goggles until we determine, and as soon as we know, we're happy to hand them back to you. How much would the repair be? Uh, depending on the extent, he sort of lifts it up, he sort of turns it, there's a couple cracks in it. Looks like it's just uh, one piece of the glass and a bit of the strap, probably somewhere in the range of 40, 50 okay. to repair the goggles. Uh, Dustin, what do you think of my idea about the punch cards for healing potions? <laughs> You're a reasonable man. Both of you are, of course. Yes, me and my brother will have to speak about that. <laughs> <laughs> we try to make joint decisions and not speak for the other. Well, good day, sirs. Yes, always a pleasure. Yes, indeed. And she's going to turn <laughs> and go back out and no. head towards Paramount. Heading in the direction of Paramount. So it's long. You gotta ask, you know. <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. Right. TC, mm -hmm. you grab the syringes. Where are you headed to? <sighs> mm. Maves. <laughs> Party it moves. <laughs> yeah, everybody. I'm gonna cl I'll clean myself up a little bit. Yeah, you can no, do that. So. There's a small yeah. wash basin. Yeah. It's not like you couldn't have it like a bath, but like, there's a small uh, little basin, like a bucket, that you can mm. clean yourself up. A little more presentable. <clears throat> and you start to head a little further south toward the river there. Let me bring up the right of music. For TC, when you head back to Maves, you almost have to convince yourself that the events of last night were not a dream. Mm. <laughs> she seems to have done a complete 180 in her demeanor. She's calmly smoking a cigarette by the front entrance while the doors and the windows are cracked open. Wisps of steam and mist sort of trickling out before they're dispersed by the wind. Very natural ventilation for whatever she might be concocting within. She sees you coming as you're coming down the thoroughfare. And she reaches in, she sort of takes one step, half, sort of half step in so you can still see her in toward the door. And she looks like she reaches past the, the door around. And then when she comes back, she reemerges with kind of a structured canvas bag. It like looks like a uh, cubic almost, has like a top, it's sort of a strap that's holding the top down. She flips the lid of it open and then she turns it to you as you're sort of coming within the last 10 feet and she tips it towards you so you can see the contents. And inside are bottles filled with a kind of bubbling bright orange liquid. And very notably, unlike say, a potion, the mouths of the flasks have been sealed shut instead of corked. A substance that was clearly meant to be tossed, not consumed. Mm -hmm. Two for you if I recall correct. Sounds just about right. You take your pick, they're all the same. Don't mind the imperfections of the bottles. They're mostly melted down and recycled and I ain't ever claimed to be a master glass blower. Artisanal. <laughs> <laughs> she closes it. There was, there was uh, the thing was four by four, so she made a decent large batch of sort of uh, alchemist fire there, yeah. but you take two of them and she slides it kind of back in there. We're, we're, are we out? You're just still? outside her front door. Yeah, she oh, doesn't okay. walk you inside. Okay. Uh, uh, may I come in? I've uh, I've got a spot of good news for you. I'm whipping up something that might be a little hazardous to inhale. Is it something that we can't do out here? Well, I just something gained of under a. Uh, uh, without prying eyes, and I thought I would hand it off without prying eyes. You see her raise an eyebrow, and you genuinely get the impression that, if not surprised that you tried, surprised that you succeeded on <laughs> sort of the task that she gave you. Step just inside the front fucking door, and don't breathe too heavy. She sort of kicks the door open. <gasps> <laughs> You step just inside, she leaves the door open, but she clearly, and as you look around, it doesn't seem like anything nefarious, but there's a number of sort of uh, small, there's a fire with some, like a glass sort of large bauble on that's bubbling liquid, You're, you don't recognize it. There's that vat in the back that the rotation of the water wheel is stirring. There's something kind of thick and viscous in there mm -hmm. that she's stirring using the motion of the uh, water wheel to assist her there. So a number of concoctions that she's sort of in the middle of working through at this particular moment. 
Any difficulties with your extraction? Oh, not at all. And I'm, I'm like slowly taking out one at a time, <laughs> like laying it on the table there. No alarms raised, no third parties given fucking chase. No, nothing like that. It was a little bit of a to do with a local mutt, but silence that and went about my business. Well, this will do fine. <laughs> Glad to see the construction of these syringes held up. Quite. Deep gnome blood placed in the wrong container will build up pressure till it explodes, violent-like. <laughs> Back when I was apprentice, I saw someone lose a hand like that. <gasps> I see. Oh. How long would you say that it took for this to happen? Depends on the fucking container. Yes, I see. Well, here are your three. I wonder if I might just ask you a couple of quick questions about... When I first cased the place, uh, I noticed one person at the mortuary and then another the next time I went. Uh, is there some kind of rotating uh, uh, work? Who lives and works there? The only person I know who works at the cemetery is Sienna Sorrell. Right. I suppose she gets people to help her take bodies over there, but nobody else that works there, as far as I know. Huh. Maybe it was just a... <laughs> Two people in the same night while you no, were there? No, no. It, it, it was the day before. So maybe somebody just dropping off something. Uh, Probably. Making a deposit. Sometimes people collect jewelry and whatnot from the corpses if someone's deceased. Right. Well, you did me a favor and it wasn't nothing, so what now? Uh, so, um, thank you again for the alchemist fire. It, it came in quite handy recently and I hate to be without it. Um, you want one of the decks that I made for Ace. Now, I know that those are a speciality and, and she is quite partial to them. There is something else that I had in mind. You don't want the deck. I would still take a deck if you've got one. <laughs> I can do it, but you gotta supply the materials yourself. All right. Ace does the same. I ain't playing favorites. One Thunderstone crushes up just enough to cover about two cards. All right. So I could get a whole deck worth as long as I give you enough Thunderstones. If you pay for it, that's fine by me. Wow. Right. <laughs> the other thing is, um, I have in the past, <clears throat> utilized a certain scent that uh, I can't imagine I'm the person to help you with whatever the fuck you're about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold on tight. A certain perfume that fills not only the nostrils but the mind. Perhaps have them lean one way or another. It's funny I have to explain this to people more often than I'd like, but I don't love making concoctions used to manipulate others. Understand? No mean to if no. If I'll I'll be back with the uh, the other things. Yes. I imagine that Ace places an order with the Sampson brothers. Otherwise, she got some sort of connect that I don't know about. Better question for her, I think. The Thunderstones, I mean. Right. Of course. It's not something that I keep on hand because Thunderstones are the sworn enemy of glass bottles and vials. <laughs> I don't mean to pry, but I couldn't help but notice the distress I came upon the last time I was here. You seem to be in brighter spirits, but is there anything that I can do to help you? My apologies if you came by and I was preoccupied. I was rehearsing a one-woman show. For which you are not the target audience. Jesus. 
Miss Maeve, I... I have seen what happens when people bottle things up inside. And sort of like gnome blood, huh? Emotions as well as unctures can be dangerous when held inside. I am sure that is true, Mr. Welker. I hope that I've proved myself useful in that if you ever need anything else, I am close by. For the price of a perfume. For the price of a working relationship <laughs> and mutual respect. Why don't you mutually respect yourself into telling me what the purpose of the perfume is? So that I might not feel so torn up about handing it over should I choose to do so. To be completely honest, I'm not quite sure yet. I am still new to town. <laughs> and frankly, other than yourself, I haven't figured out whom to ingratiate myself with. Well, if you think of something specific, stop on by. Thank you for the syringes. It wasn't nothing. I was kidding about the gnome blood, by the way. Enjoy them while you got them. Oh, 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 oh this little shit! Oh. Where are you headed? <laughs> Got me all weirded out. <laughs> Got me sweating on my britches. Got you. <sighs> Thought I was gonna have to run to Morna too. Yeah. She's got something yeah. as well. Morna! 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 Mail place. <laughs> 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 over to Narvos. Yeah, CC. yeah, that one. Oh, man. Oh, man. Before we head in that direction. Oh, man. I love it. The remainder of your journey home, if you're ready yet to call Broncolo home, comes with a few, it comes with very few notable distractions. I love it. Clinker patrols in the past seem a bit more fidgety than when you last saw them, but that might be to be expected. But otherwise, the travelers along this road are merely going through the motions of the last few kind of working hours of the day. You continue on westward, and then the hubbub of the town center is upon you, just moments later. You're grateful now to be chasing conversation instead of wild animals, many matters to tend to having been gone for the bulk of the day. The valley's propensity for unexpected torrents of air is on full display. You've been in here before. The valley can be quite windy. The bowl kind of acts as a little vortex and the wind spins around, <sighs> kind of kicks up dust, adding brown to this already kind of burnt orange sky above you. Between a couple of buildings up ahead, you think you see Dr. Blaylock chasing his hat through the street that's blown off his head, his hunch and middling athleticism not doing him any favors as he sort of lumbers after it, just out of reach. It's a nice feeling that at this point, wherever you choose to go next, you know how to get there. Your familiarity with the camp growing fast, even if the flea bag label takes a little longer to shed. So once again, you all come into town, coming in through. By the time you guys get in, again, we're going to kind of jump back and forth a little bit in time here, is the, the open market is very much winding down at this point. People are packing their stuff up, people are putting things away. You do not, you don't know this, but you don't see the crowd that they saw when they kind of came in. It seems that business is concluded. So people are finishing up their business for the day. A lot of people are headed towards either the Lucky Heathen or the Music Box, some of the popular spots that you guys know. Uh, any sign of the goblin that sells mushrooms? No, he's not there. Mm. <laughs> um, well, 100% success rate. Feels good. Feels good. 
I'm, I'm gonna peek into the Paramount just to ask Clemens if he's seen TC and Morna, and then uh, run to the Merc Hall and yeah. get all that done. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't mind hearing our friend state. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Head toward the Paramount. Mm-hmm. Heading there as well. Yeah, yeah, Great. Yeah. As you guys all start to move in that direction, sort of with TC and Morna on your mind, wondering, sort of, even if you're reasonably confident they made it out, sort of maybe getting at least some more information about yeah. what happened there at the bridge. That is where we are going to take a oh, break. No, oh, no, 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 no. We've reached the halfway mark okay. here. Okay. You guys have had a lot of good conversations, wow. both with each other and with people in town. Plenty more to come as people finish up their business for the day. Um, it, and a wonderful first scene there in uh, in the woods there in the downwield. And I would like to give a special shout out to Physiopedia. Wow. Yeah. For their article on running biometrics, oh which I God. copied yeah. before, before the opening. Why? Wow. <laughs> yeah, you um, did. Um, Holy cow. So uh, I didn't want to not source them for that. Um, so awesome. we're going to take our little break, enjoy yeah. the puzzles and the prunk ho- uh. hollow powerball. And, uh, and then we'll pick it right back up from there. Yeah, we got a lot of folks watching on TikTok, so give us a follow and we'll come back in 15 yeah. minutes. We're yeah, just we're gonna right. go offline uh, and come back online uh, then. Yeah, come on back, hang yeah. out. If you follow Forget us, it. you can then get a little notification about yeah. us being back live. Whoopery. I think. Yeah. See you all on the Turn other side. Bye. 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 Absolutely stop. <laughs> you asked me. Poco Doka says, sounds wunderbar. Wunderbar! wunderbar. Darn yes, it. Everyone's saying nice things about Let's my hat. Yeah. You don't have to go comprehensively. Feats you're considering? Do you want to shout some out that you're just considering? Do people want to know what was on yes. the... Oh, I yes! Oh, yes! Haskell? Oh, oh yeah. Come on, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, where's your hat, bitch? I got a big head, too. And that one stuffed on my dome. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Oh. <laughs> there was a moment in the baths where I was like, <laughs> thinking about like TC puts his head back and just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Can, there's a question about the solo session that's very much revealing what it is. Can I ask it? I mean, people are gonna yeah, watch it. They're gonna, gonna watch it. Oh, I'm gonna watch it. Bang, 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 bang. If the Gorianon comes a walking into town. I actually, I don't want to say anything about that. <gasps> just for now. I fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're thrilled that you all are here supporting us. We love you all very much. We will see you next week, and we will dive back in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We hope you had a lovely break. Feeling refreshed. Very refreshed. Um, we're gonna be diving back in here now that uh, everybody's returned to town, although with slightly disjointed timelines. But before we dive back in. Yes. I, yes. Okie dokie. Kyrie resubscribes. subscribes. That's my oh. mom. <gasps> Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, Stone Daily and We love your son. Yeah, now I'm so distracted. <laughs> That's so nice. No, don't apologize. That's the sweetest thing ever. Bernsey997 resubscribed. Texas Beer Junkie resubscribed. Thank you. Warren Fist resubscribed. Ignorant Science gifted a sub. Helljack did a thousand bits. Thank you. Ali Slayer resubscribed. GF Powers resubscribed. Cool Shaper resubscribed. Cool Shaper 500 bits. Jamgo Rousseau resubscribed. Thank you. Sir Geard resubscribed. <laughs> Rar Knight gave out 10 community subs. Thank, Thank you very much. Jay Brownie did 10. 1,000 bits, and then Nerf Master gave out five community oh subs. Wow. Thank you so thank very you much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank welcome you. back, folks, on TikTok. I hope everyone. Welcome a back. <clears throat> um, thank you guys so much. That's amazing. Oh, awesome. We're going to return to Paramount Lodgings. However, we're backtracking a little bit because Morna was on her way there, and she would have arrived well in advance of the others. And so once again, as you, not long after TC sort of popped in and out of there, you come in, and and it seems at this point, again, you don't know this, but uh, Clemens isn't even finished sort of sorting the mail. He's, as you come in, he's still sort of, he's only got a couple envelopes left. He's slotting them into holes there as he gets inside. A few people in the kitchen area have kind of picked up and are headed out the door. Some people having a last meal before maybe they go grab a drink somewhere. The first thing that catches your attention as you step through the doorway is that Kenzo is coming down the stairs and he's got like a bundle of sheets and sort of bedding attire that are sort of in his arms. And as he passes by, he's sort of, mm. 
and he sort of moves in the back toward the kitchen and also toward where the laundry's kind of done behind there. And hearing Kenzo sort of make that noise, Clemens kind of turns and see you there. Welcome back. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I spoke with Mr. Welker just a moment ago and it ah. um, seems that everything went according to plan in the downwheel. Did indeed, yeah. How do you find the company of Miss Adams Rogue? She is quite a character. <laughs> yes, yes. A, a valued member of the community in many ways. Very talented, yes. Uh, I did have um, an item for you. Um, and he sort of kind of looks around to see if anyone's kind of in the immediate vicinity. Mainly, you kind of get the sense that he might be seeing if any of your companions are here, like whether TC is in the vicinity or any of the others. Um, if you would towards the desk. Yeah, yeah. if you would uh, step around the desk here for a moment. Come around the other side. He opens up a drawer and he takes out a little envelope and it looks a little lumpy, like there's something inside that's more than just parchment, like, a, like an item, but not a big one, like a small item in a little envelope. And he holds the item and he, he gets a little closer to you and he speaks a little quieter. The, um, the washroom here is closed and locked between the hours of 9 and 10 a.m. after the morning bustle when people head off to work. This hour is for Kenzo or myself to clean and restock supplies, towels, soaps, but in reality this process rarely takes more than 10 or 20 minutes. If you ever find yourself needing a moment to yourself, oh. just for you, the rest of the 40 minutes are yours. And he hands you the envelope, and you can feel it when you touch it. There's like a small key inside that in the envelope there. That is very kind. We try our best to accommodate the needs of all our guests. Thank you, Mr. Clemens. Of course. She's gonna, um, she like wants to apologize again, but she just <coughs> sort of like swallows that and like nods mm -hmm. and heads up. Right, give me an inside check uh, before you head up there. Okay. <sighs> Ooh, baby. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. As you are just starting to turn, you sort of give one last look at Clemens there, and the impression that you get is not at all that it was like a romantic gesture, but one that was born of sympathy, maybe even sympathy for <coughs> maybe knowing someone with not a similar affliction because he doesn't know what's wrong, but whether he knows someone who also was sort of prone to outbursts or sort of needing time to themselves. Like it wasn't just a, a thing that he does for guests. Like it seemed like there was a, a recognition in sort of needing a, a, a space for yourself there. That's. Cool. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Wow. Okay. You head upstairs. As you head upstairs, you notice what TC does as well, although there's nobody in there at the moment. The door to formerly Haskell's room is wide open. You can see inside it. It's completely empty. The bedding's <coughs> been removed. The desk has been cleaned. The window is wide open to allow it to kind of air out. Whatever that kind of cloth was at the bottom is gone. It looks like no one was ever there or that yeah. is preparing for a new person to take She's gonna there. say just a silent prayer as she goes up the, the stairs and be like, thank the gods, <laughs> you know, we got it just in time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm gonna go into my room and um, uh, sort of go up to the mirror and the wash basin and just sort of like slash, splash her face and um, try to like get some of the blood off of herself. Yes, I know. No, I didn't do it on purpose. Obviously. And if there is any justice and if my devotion means anything, there will be some uh, protection, there, some allowance. I, I have shut up. <laughs> I can't do this right now. She's gonna sit down at the desk and she's gonna take out Haskell's note and she's gonna read it over. And put it back. 
she's gonna get her game face on <laughs> and say, you have a fucking job to do. And there is no other option. And I guess I'm gonna go down to the sort of <laughs> lobby of the Paramount and wait for TC quietly. Depending on how much time it takes, I don't think I can get a short rest in, but. I mean, you don't know how long he's gonna be, but also like if you were in your room, he could get you. I mean, if you're, you know, sort of desperate for a short rest, you could probably try. I, I, <laughs> I you really, can stay in your room and sort of. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. A short rest doesn't mean you have to like sleep or cl like you no, could sort of give a listen like, to see if you hear his yeah, door, or hear his voice in the lobby. Like, yeah. Lay yeah. Eyes open, staring at the <laughs> ceiling, covering her ears from Bill and Barbara, and just kind of. zone out as much as she can. You do so, and, and you can stay like sort of loosely cognizant of if you hear somebody's voice that you yeah. recognize or not. Yeah, feel free to use any rest abilities. We're gonna head over to, <laughs> over to Narvos C&C. &C. Oh, I can't wait for this, let's go. Oh, let's freaking go. Let's go. Nervous. Your first visit to the courier's office coincides with an apparent arrival of packages. There's two vehicles that are stopped just outside with wagon beds filled to the brim with boxes and crates that are strapped down or covered with a damp tarp to protect against the earlier rain showers from the prior day, you know, multiple days to travel here. A folding sign on the front step has the names of the five major cities that are beyond the cusp. You see Peron, Unesia, Sewol, Ichik, and Vangor. And there's a piece of parchment that's been nailed to it and that has very printed in very neat handwriting and it reads, rates to Ichik increased until further notice. Trouble down south, we apologize for the inconvenience. Mm -hmm. So all of them have like a rate, but then the Ichik one is crossed out and there's a different rate that's a little higher than it was at first. You step inside and as the items from the wagon are being ferried inside by some of the um, drivers of the wagons, it leaves only one imposing woman pushing kind of curly strands of hair out of her face to collect fees from people and address envelopes. And there's a line of customers that's probably only about five people long, but it's progressing very slowly. <laughs> the man that's directly in front of you has a satchel that's slung over his back and he frequently passes it back and forth. So he has it over his left shoulder. Mm. <clears throat> And then he kind of poses it back after a little bit of time passes. You can see that it looks very heavy and sort of gives a little quiet grunt each time he's forced to adjust. But otherwise it's very quiet in here. And you can hear at the front desk, she's not she's not stalling or anything. It's, it's There's some people here who aren't lettered and they're dictating their letter to her. So these, they're sort of saying what they want to say and, and she's writing it down and then closing it. So there's a few people here and it might not take too long, but because there isn't other people tending here, there's a little uh, bit of time <laughs> taking. I'm gonna make you wait in like real time. Oh, how well, I don't want to fucking wait for this bitch. How many people are in this line? There's five people in the line, and the the one close, the one in the back of the line is currently the guy. Yes, the, he's like shifting satchel. back and forth with the satchel. All right. And after like the third or fourth grunt, he sort of moves it back to the other shoulder, and he sees you as he's doing so. Just my luck. Come to offload when Izzy's associates ain't here to cut down on the weight. <laughs> what, are they all out making runs or something? Is this you? Is this typical? I wouldn't say typical, no. I'd put the damn thing down, but last time I was here, I scratched the floor and got a death stare from Micah like I just drowned his dog. <laughs> <laughs> what is he making that mistake again? What is a floor for then not to rest things on? What is this? What kind of business is this? They are so up in other people's. First time at the courier's office. It is, yes. How much is it worth to you for me to... My business here is strictly quick and administrative. Autry. Uh, TC. If you would let me slip in front of you, if it takes any more than three minutes, I'll give you a silver now and a silver again if it takes more than that. All right. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give him a silver and sure. like- He and, swaps places with you and, and, we'll and get there. in front of him. <sighs> now the grunting is sort of behind you instead yeah. of in front of you, sort yeah. of patiently, un, impatiently tapping your toe there. What if I, uh, 
<laughs> How big is this satchel? Like, um, it's yeah, uh, okay. like it clearly. I mean, give me a perception check. Okay. It, it looks like very lumpy. Um, uh, nineteen. If you had to guess, it looks like it has like stone in it, like maybe ore in it. That like chunks of ore that okay. he has in a satchel there, like just based on the sort of irregular shapes that are bulging. Do I have anything in my? What if I were to lay down my coat for the Yuta rest it upon? It's very kind of you, but I'd rather not chance it. <laughs> it's just a few chunks of mithril ore. I, I sent them home to my wife and kids, and then I crossed my fingers hoping that they might leave Peron and join me out here. Uh, Sorry to say that it's looking less and less likely by the day. Even with that many chunks of mithril headed their way? Yeah. The getting's good, but the getting out here, not so much. <laughs> the getting it or getting yourself? No, the, the getting the ore is good. I, I got a working claim. It's just that my wife, I think she doesn't like the risks of the trip. Uh, understandable. Yeah. Unsure, uh, less the trip itself and how the trip might make it look to friends of ours back in Peron. I see. You know, people's reasons for coming here and all that. Right. I even had a house built here. Foolish man that I was, thinking that'd provide him temptation to come over. Now that I know how much she's stuck in her ways, I'm probably just selling the damn thing. Is that the plan now? Just to build up your coffers and Head back to Baran? Yeah, I'll probably see the claim till it's pinched out and sell the house, and then I'll probably head back. It was such a fruitful claim, uh, I'm surprised. You, well, I imagine you, you've had several offers on it. Yeah, Bison offered to buy it at one point, but uh, I said no. I, I like the work well enough. It's. I imagine I, I know that. Some people are worried about saying no to a man like Bison, but it's a small operation. It's just me and a couple other guys. I don't think he's worried about it. Anywhere near any of his other claims? Well, he's got claims all over. Hard not to be near one of his claims. Too true. Where are yeah. you from? I've spent time in Peron myself. Yeah, what we'll part? <laughs> <laughs> um. You looking for the district that you're yeah, from? Yeah, yeah. It's five two, crossings. Five. I was going to say yeah. two something. Five. <laughs> two crossings. Yeah. Two. The three other crossings burned down? Come <laughs> <laughs> on. You haven't been back for a long time. <laughs> five crossings. Five crossings. Uh, I grew up in the five crossings. <laughs> five crossings? Well, damn, you got even less reason to be out here than me. Kidding, of course. I, I know nothing of your situation. Everybody got their reasons. Hmm. I'm from uh, Crow Hill. And Crow Hill's in the Central Ward. It, it's like a um, sort of residential merchant area, neither affluent nor slum, like somewhere in the middle there. Right. I don't suppose uh, you're looking to stay here for a long time, probably eager to get back to Five Crossings. Depends. Sure, sure. My business here is uh, uh, complicated, and I'm uh, not sure when or if it'll be through. I imagine my mind will pinch out in a, I don't know, another week, maybe less. If you find yourself staying for a long time and you're in the market for a house, you let me know. Perhaps. Uh, where is that located? The house is uh, up on the stubborn bluffs right before you get to the Gnome Nook. All right. I'll have to look you up. Remind me your name again? Hey, Autry. Autry, Autry. Cobb. I'd sell it to you sooner if that'd make the difference, because like I said, I'm definitely on my way out. All right, I'll move some things around and I might be in touch. Sure, sure. Uh, I think you're up. Oh. Sort of looking. <laughs> a bit. It seemed that after that person that was dictating their message, a couple people already had their stuff pre-filled out, so there's a little bit of a, sort of a quick passing of the next two people. Come on up there. Hello. Hello, honey. Welcome to Narvo CNC. 
I'm sorry for the wait. We usually got more bodies in here than just little old me. Now, you already got your letter penned, or do you need some assistance with its composition? My letter seems to be in some kind of a limbo at the moment, actually. I am Mr. Welker. Oh, you know, not that I make a habit of turning away business, but you do know that Ms. Sorrell lives right here in town. I do. You seem less than pleased with me, Mr. Welker. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I am merely confused as to why a, uh, a good money and uh, curry hasn't curried. <laughs> Mr. Cobb, it's nice to see you, but why don't you take a step outside for a moment for me, honey? He sort of shifts his bag back. Be back in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Waddles his way back outside. Nice man. I bounced your letter back because the circumstances struck me as rather suspicious. A flea bag comes to town and wants one of mine to deliver a note that he could easily take himself. Now I got a lot of friends and only a few enemies, but I find myself thinking more about the few than the many. Now this feels a little bit to me like one of them situations where something bad happens to me or my courier if we take it there on your behalf. So one of three things is going to happen. Either you're going to show me the letter's contents, which I have not looked at. You're going to take the letter yourself, or you're going to pay me enough to go ahead and risk it. But those are your only three options. <laughs> I am... <laughs> aghast and surprised at <laughs> whatever it is you think. I'm Your sorry. lack of understanding of how things run around here is of little surprise to me. Yes, I don't understand why one letter cannot be passed from one hand to another. Is Sienna your enemy that you can't dare approach? She is not an enemy of mine, no. If I must explain myself, Clemens was taking this and another letter to you as I had urgent business in the downwheel, a bounty. I was on my way out the door, and I suppose I could have taken it myself, but I lumped the two together. Mm. Next time you want to deliver a letter to a friend in town, take it your fucking self. Gladly. And now, slides the letter back across the table. Day. Good day. Do him a kindness and tell Mr. Cobb to come in on your way out. Turn and leave. Head outside. You see him there, sir? <laughs> Scratched the floor, too, huh? <laughs> I hope I haven't uh, waylaid you for too long. No. You done? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> through the door there. Fuck! Ooh. Walk back to the Paramount. Walk back to the Paramount. We're gonna follow you there as well. You guys are, you know, in town a, a, at least a little bit of time ahead. Pass through the front doors of the Paramount and into the main lobby there, where it does seem that uh, Clemens at this point has finished sorting the mail. He once again has returned to the ledgers. He seems to be balancing some things. And you do see a motion that he kind of repeats. He's like crossing something out, turning a page and crossing something. And if you just kind of give a quick piece, also with kind of hazarding, put, putting pieces together of what you already know, it looked like there was, you know, days that Someone had rented the room, possibly Haskell, that are now being sort of crossed off the ledgers as if, you know, no, doesn't seem to be returning or doesn't think he's going to be returning. Mr. Welker. Ah, yes, hello. Able to see your letter delivered? Um, it'll get sorted, I'm sure. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, Miss Eastig did stop by. I believe she went up to her room. Mm, I'll call on her there. Thank you. 
Head upstairs. Once again, off the left, you see now that that room is cleared out, as Morna did as well. Take a deep breath before I knock. <laughs> Maybe listen to the door for a second. It's quiet in there. <sighs> She's gonna get up. Cleaned yourself up a bit, as is, as I can see. Yes. Myself as well. Uh, I know we've got a dinner date tonight, but uh, uh, perhaps yes. we take a look at that site before we do. Let's. All right. Quickly. 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 You guys gather your things. You head out. I'll say it was close enough if you want to take the benefits of the short rest, I believe. Well, if, even if it was close, you could tell CC you had to wait a moment. Okay. And, yes. So you're able to finish up your moment. short rest. Yeah. Yes. Okay. TC <laughs> goes to his room, you know, whether you want to drop the letter or gather your things, whatever you want. Uh, no, I'm keeping the letter on me. <laughs> oh my god. And you guys are heading to the goblin, the goblin, goblin the camp. Goblin. Holy it's shit. still like, it's like dusk now. Yeah, yeah, it's probably like getting close, like 6.30ish, you know, time of the day at this point. Gotcha. This town has its areas that seem to be disconnected or isolated from the rest of the community. The cemetery, the far end on the south side of the river, even Maves to an extent is a little bit sort of sectioned off. But none so obviously tucked out of sight than the goblin tents and the back alley that leads to them. <laughs> Let's go. Once you get to the rear side of the main strip, there's this steep rocky bluff that cuts off any kind of ambient light coming down from the houses above. And the poorly maintained path is carpeted with undersized footprints heading in all directions, both in kind of mostly like an east-west. In just a short interval, you'll, you're startled more than once by goblins emerging from the shadows, sort of uh. just kind of creeping out from behind, whether the shadows kind of the buildings are casting or just little nooks and crannies that seem to seem too small for a person to fit in and yet someone pops out at the last second. They stop only briefly, br briefly to give you a suspicion-laden inspection before they kind of scurry away in another direction. For all the wealth that the mining operations have brought to Brunk Hollow, it's clear that little of it, if any, is invested here. Worn garments barely one step up from rags, flimsy tents lacking the durability for an extended stay, and discarded junk littering the spaces in between, frayed rope, strips of cloth, broken axles, the kind of stuff that if you just dumped into the main thoroughfare, you'd get a quick rebuke or maybe even a little beating for dumping your trash there. The further you walk to the northwest, the more that you're wandering into the kind of living arrangements here. And there seems to be no organization to it at all. You see no rows or numbers on the tents, no signs to indicate what might be a place of business rather than a private area, rather than a home, though it's possible they often function as both. Goblins are not too cognizant of the concept of personal space either. Some of them brush by you without so much as a glance in your direction, like that's normal. Like they'll push by you, <laughs> sort of on their way by. <clears throat> you sort of, you check your pockets kind of immediately just to make sure that no one kind of picked anything from you. A few others kind of just hover a foot or two away from you, kind of rudely, like inspecting you up and down. And you might wave them away and they might kind of disappear and then, go on, get. And that happens multiple times, like watching you, like just strangers in their environment, kind of determining maybe if you have anything of value. You see them not making eye contact with you, but sort of looking kind of at your belt and at your backpack and at your many, any weapons that might be showing on your person. <clears throat> so you move into this area here, kind of an uneasy feeling. It's like 95% goblins, but as you know, some people do rent tents here. You do see the occasional person here who once again looks like either fallen on hard times or came here with hard times as the, you know, obviously not one of the wealthy prospecting types that's sort of occupying some of the tents here. There's one of them still kind of hovering around There's us. a number of them hovering around. Any of you speak common? Yeah. What's the layout here? How are the lots organized? Gotta talk to Hank Hong. Where is he? You want to talk to Hinkley? Where is he? Yes. I'll find him myself. 
I can take the angle. I'd rather just have a map. Do you know where the lots are? Which lots are which? Hang on, tell you. And another goblin kind of go. I can take you, Hang on. Oh. Do I see? Do I, I see any goblins just for me mm -hmm. that have the tools that I saw at that dig site? Give me a perception. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um. Uh, 12. 12. Not immediately. You would guess that because that was sort of an independent operation, that they might be a little furtive or clandestine about it, that they might not just be carrying them out in the open if that was against orders or whatever it is. Um, if you were to do a more thorough search for something like that, you probably would want to look not here in the first row of mm. tents or homes that you see because they would not so openly be there. You would need to go deeper into the sort of goblin camp territory. Okay. Your tent right around here? Mm, it's right here. What number is it? Six. And the one next to it? <laughs> 44. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me! I fucking knew it. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take a copper out. Where is Hank Hawk? Two. Can you take us to two? One person, one copper. Two people. I'll give him a copper. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. Do you follow? Yeah. yeah. Start to weave in and out. Once again, there, there's like no rows. Like you constantly are pivoting and moving in different directions because there's no organization to them at all. They just set up wherever the closest open spot is. So you, after like moving three, four rows deep of these tents, you look back and you can't even like see where you came from. Like you're just lost in this sea of goblin tents here that are kind of situated, situated by the river. You get to what you would imagine is kind of the back left corner of this odd little neighborhood, and there's a tent standing probably not 10, 15 feet from the river. You can hear the river moving by, and there's a, a tent there that you wouldn't have pegged as belonging to any kind of leader or chief, a, a rare goblin that seems uninterested in flaunting a status among its peers. In typical kind of goblin communities and cultures, the lead goblin would have an extravagant, relatively speaking for goblins, an extravagant tent that clearly denoted that they were of means, but this one has no such appearance. The front flaps are open, and inside there's a goblin with a very kind of neutral, wizened face that looks like it's tired of talking to you before you even have a conversation. <laughs> has that sort of world-weary look to him. <laughs> he has several nose rings starting small and getting larger, kind of like concentric circles. And there's several white markings on his face and neck that are hard to discern if they're sort of painted, like temporary, or if they're actual tattoos. It's very difficult to tell. Some of them are faded and sort of splotchy in a way that looks temporary, but at the same time, they might just be very, very old. It could have been done a long, long time ago. He has a reddish cloak that's draped over his shoulders with no shirt on underneath, so you can see the sinewy muscles of his chest and abdomen. And he's currently hunched over a tiny table with only enough room for a lantern, and a stack of parchment that he seems thoroughly engrossed in. He's kind of running his finger along each line of text. It seems like he can read, but with difficulty, like he's very deliberately looking at each line of text on these pieces of parchment so as mm -hmm. not to miss anything as he reads. Mm -hmm. And the one that's guiding you. Hang on. Thank you. Thank you. Tip. You got it in advance. Oh now get it. Go on, get! <laughs> you don't have to go on get, everybody. He hasn't get yet. <laughs> He's scary <laughs> enough. Now he has. All right. And in that exact moment, another one. Like for some No. Move along. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Are you positive you want to do this? I suppose, what do we have to lose? My, I wonder. If our angle she is checks not... her pockets as he says that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder Doesn't seem that anything's been stolen. Yeah. If our angle should just be straightforward, we are looking for the sight of someone who will not be missing it. Do you have the lot number? I do. I have the slip even. Great. Let's just give him a slip. Mm -hmm. 
has moved to the sort of foot of the tent yeah. there, you sort of peer inside where, once again, he's sort of running his finger along some of the pages there. A knock knock. Excuse us, Mr. Honk. He kind of looks up. He could, waits. Could you direct us to tent? We're looking for lot 23. I am Hank Honk. Hi. Hello. Hello. Please, come in. Uh, all right. We'll come in. You sort of move in oh. and there is like barely yeah. enough space for the three of you here. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Hawk. I'm afraid I have no stools to offer you. Quite all right, we don't- We won't be long. We won't be long. As I say, a lot 23. You could have someone guide us there. would be much appreciative. I am Hank Oh, no. I am Morna Ishti. Nice to meet you, Morna Ishti. I am TC. Hello, TC. Charmed, I'm sure. Are you looking for a tent for the evening? Mm-hmm. I'm looking for a... Pat- because lot 23 is already taken. No, we are not looking for a tent for the evening. We're looking for lot 23. Hmm. Lot 23 is taken. Mm-hmm. Right. Mr. Hank. Hank Honk. Hank Honk. We assure you. <sighs> the man who rented lot 23 is dead, and we are looking We to- are. Collect his belongings for him. To see if there is anyone that we can send word to from wherever he came from. He is dead? Yes. I promise you that. Hmm. The son of a bitch. <laughs> Friends of the deceased? No. We barely knew him. And yet you come to collect his things. He did not seem to have any friends in town. We hope to send his items back to him, his Mm. family. Very kind of you. He was a devout man. (sighs) Yes. Does that disgust you? (sighs) Yes. Well, we come to Brunkhollow to get away. Yes. It's true. Most do. We wish to send his things away. Hmm. The stink of religion on them. Indeed. Hmm. Come. Burn them with me. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 my God. God. I love this. <sighs> so it's a walk. Perhaps so you're walking now. Yes, you're talking as about. we're walking and talking. sort of shuffling. I'm along. also sort of looking, looking for people with the tools as, okay. as we go. Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Honga, we mm. shouldn't wish to burn them. We don't own them. We'd like to send them back to his family. Is that amenable? Perhaps his family was happy to be rid of the man. Happy to be rid of his things, then. That is for them to decide, no. I believe. You know this man's burial preferences? I have a fairly good idea, yes. Yes, I do as well. I have been familiar with these disgusting, devout people myself in the past. (laughs) Make a persuasion check. (gasps) Thirteen. Thirteen. He considers this and he begins to walk a little faster. You're led to a section of the sort of goblin district where somehow it seems the tents are getting even smaller, barely large enough to fit like a cot and a stool and that's it. And they also start to have some numbers pinned to the flaps, squares of cloth rather than paper, with the idea that maybe that's marginally more weather resistant than sort of a piece of parchment or a piece of paper. Though several of them are faded to the point where you can barely make out the numbers. And once again, they seem to be completely random. You pass by, Seven, 106, 14, like they just bounce around constantly, of course. 
He points a little bit into the distance to one that if you sort of give a squint and with it not being fully dark yet, it looks like it might be 23. And it seems virtually identical to all the others. There's no light seeping through the creases that might indicate an occupant with like a lantern or a candle or something on the inside. And you take a quick look and it looks like there's boot prints on the muddy ground around the entrance as opposed to sort of goblin footed even, or smaller okay. feet, if they're even booted, uh, sort of goblin feet. They look fresh? Uh, they don't, they don't <laughs> seem especially recent. So in the unlikely event that someone was maybe seeking this man out before you, it doesn't seem like anyone came, you know, it doesn't seem like they got here first. It seems like it, it, you can't possibly like match the boot, but it, the footprints look about the size of the man that you saw at the music box. So it, that wouldn't mm -hmm. seem unusual to you. It's not obviously someone different. Sort of motions in that direction. If there are any valuables among them, I would like you to take them to me. Not sentimental value. Uh, valuable valuables? Gold. But Silver. Knowing little of Copper. The, <laughs> knowing little of the man, I I doubt there will be much in that way, but we will see. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hawk. Hang on. Thank you. Turns. He starts to walk in the opposite direction. He leaves you here kind of in this I'm, mess of tents in the middle of the goblin district. I'm gonna watch him for a little while and see if he doesn't approach anybody. I mean, there's lots of goblins yeah. around, but I wanna see if he has any words with them. Give me a perception Kinda check, yeah. as he goes. Mm -hmm. Nine. Nine, like you said, people do kind of come up to him here and there because yeah, he's a man of, he's an important figure, but <laughs> you don't immediately, you don't see him like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to that effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not quite like that, but a couple uh, people do talk to yeah. him on his way. Uh, one time he kind of gives just a little look over his yeah. shoulder, but he, does, he doesn't return or sort of make... We should be quick about yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. Slip inside, baby. Yeah, Ooh! You push open the flap, and you're greeted with a bit of an alarming sight. Thank you. A goblin has crawled halfway under the backside of this tent that evidently was not anchored down as well as it ought to be. Backside so or front side? His front side is in the interior of the tent, and then so the cloth is kind of at his lower back, so his legs are, you can't see them, they're, out, they're like on the opposite side. What are you doing? As you see him, he currently has his grubby little mitts wrapped around a leather shoulder bag oh, that a second ago may have been resting up against the dingy cot that's on the floor, and he looks at you wide-eyed. I, I jump. You die for him, give me a athletic oh. check. Oh, oh my god, right. grubby on. little mitts. Yes. I will also die for it. Sure, you can, right. athletic check. Nine. It's not gonna do it. Oh, that's not gonna do it. That's <laughs> I've told you my short you sword. leap forward, you don't yeah. grab him, he has it, and he <laughs> slips, and the tent <laughs> kind of falls down, oh. and you can hear him <laughs> round the back. I'm going this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I slip under. Oh Everybody, God. you go under it, <laughs> and you go around. Yeah, yeah. Great, all of you. The chase kind of begins here. Oh. You're sort of darting through, and you can see him. He's like holding the satchel, and several times he kind of <laughs> <laughs> looks back. I'll as threaten he's with the, I'll, I'll make it look like I'm gonna fire him. Um, you he's take incredible. that out, but every time you kind of pick it up, he's weaving between the tents like there is no yeah. clear shot in this entire place. This Give me an athletics check as you just chase time. after him. Uh, that is a 16. 16. No, no, 15. 15. 15, great. Okay, you start to gain on him a little bit. TC, you draw your crossbow and you can't find the shot and when you bring it down, they're off a little bit, but you see Morna sort of tearing through the tents here. As he starts to run, you can see him kind of He seems like he yells something. A couple oh. goblins come in and they like, they just try to like get in your way. <laughs> kind of leap over them. Give me a, an acrobatic score. I'll, check. I'll try to cut him off then. I'll kind of sure. go a little different way. You guys are like pushing through the tents. At one point, my cunning action yeah, dashes. At one point, you like burst through, and there's you get to like a semicircle of tents where there's no way through. So you just open one of the tents, go underneath, and kind of come out the other side. If there's any short ones, I jump. Over. Give me an acrobatics <laughs> yeah. check. Yeah, fourteen. Fourteen. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
hand. He's still got the satchel in his hand. He's running as fast as he possibly can. A couple, one goblin kind of jumps in front of Morna and she just kind of shoulders <laughs> <laughs> like knock him away. And she continues after him. You can see him. You still have him in your sights. You're not kind of losing him. And he, <laughs> he's got that satchel and he's just <sighs> running as fast as he possibly can. pretty much just tense in front of him? Is there any kind of structures or any other? Things? It's all tense kind of here. From There's trees and stuff. Like occasionally there's a tree here okay. and there. Yeah, no. So as you guys continue forward, he looks like he's kind of heading loosely as you start to hear in your ears. You can hear a little more of the water. He seems like he's headed loosely in the direction of the river there. That sort of curls yeah. around if you check your map of Broncolo there. That yeah. A river sort of uh, swings in kind of a semicircle yeah. background in the other direction. So he seems like he's headed loosely in that direction. And at one point, you can hear the water start to get louder, and he holds the satchel up above his head. <laughs> and he leans back, and you're too far, but oh. Morna. Oh, <laughs> go ahead and give me an athletics check. Come on. Oh my God. Get him. <laughs> Oh, that is uh, 19. 19. He's yes. trying to hurl the satchel into the river, maybe with the intention of getting as, a, as it floats down. But the uh, strap of the bag just flicks back, and you grab it, and you just yank, and it <laughs> falls backward. <laughs> and then he he dives into the river there. Oh, man. But you have the bag in your hand. You got it. Kind of sling it over. Yeah, it's, it's monkey, filthy. <laughs> Back to the tent. For a moment here, as you think you have a moment to kind of gather yourself, you shouting there, the running, bursting through the tents. And you're starting to see a lot of sort of creeping eyes and faces. Um, actually, let's open it here. <laughs> no, not here. Right, let's fine. just get the hell out All of right. here. <laughs> Let's um, not, not go back to the tent. Let's no, so if, if the if the river, if we're up against the river, mm -hmm. can we kind of follow the river yep, back? Yeah, you to could that? following the riverbank okay, there let's further do south. That. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You walk right. along the river there, yep. and you're starting to gather. They don't make a move, but you're starting to gather a small crowd. There's like one that's kind of following you, and then a second one, and then a third one. <sighs> let's be quick. Fourth one. Uh, if if we get up to a jog, do they also? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Turn around and say, back off. <clears throat> Today is not the fucking day for this. You don't want to fucking mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> I've seen her gut among me. Uh, intimidation. 17. 17. At that, I mean, you you don't quite like draw a weapon, but you make a move like you would, like that you were willing to, and they sort of back off. One kind of disappears between the tents. Another one disappears. Turns. God. Start to move down the river there. You get closer and closer to what is on the map, like the blacksmith there at the end. You can see it coming up in the distance, maybe uh, you know another hundred feet away. You're following the bank of the river there. And as you saw when you first went to him, uh, Hong Kong's tent is very close to the river. Like I said, it's only... And as you're moving along the bank and heading in the direction of the bank blacksmith, you just see him sort of pop out of his tent. <gasps> we didn't even have a chance. Well, I suppose we have not ingratiated ourselves uh. to the little ones here. Says the guy shouting Mung Bean in the middle of the <laughs> Yes, I suppose not. You right. have it in your possession. Now okay. let's take a look at the cursed thing. Just gonna open it up. Open it up. Inside the satchel has a few curious items. One of them, not so <laughs> curious, especially having, having spoken to uh, Clemens, is a small assortment of gemstones of different shapes, sizes. None of them like brilliant, clear cut quality like you'd get at a jeweler. Like they're a little raw, but still valuable for certainly, but like raw minerals, less so like beautiful, like not that you'd find in a ring or a yeah. necklace. Like they're, yeah, like a like little just dusty. They would need some polishing or cutting to be sort of true mm -hmm. gemstones. In addition to that, there's a vial of blood. Just a small, I mean, three inches corked vial of blood. Sure. Nothing unusual about it that you can tell. It seems like it, there's no discolorations, reddish, regular, dark colored blood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a small jar 
that has some kind of like brine, like you'd see a, like pickles in this, but instead there's a chunk of what looks like human flesh in this brine. So the preserving broth? this chunk of flesh in this whatever tincture mixture this is. And a container of, uh, again, like another little jar, this one's sort of cubic in shape, that has this kind of chunky white dust that looks like, it would look like salt, but finer than salt. Like it's been broken up more than that. And give me a uh, arcana check. I keep putting two in there. Um, that is a, there's a minus on that. <laughs> um, that's a five, but can I cast magical awareness on, see what You can is? indeed, you take a moment. TZ, as you're sort of looking over the objects, you look over and Morna sort of, is just breathing out slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and as she does, she once again looks the objects over. None of them are magical. None of them are magical and you guys don't recognize the chunky white sort of powdery substance that's in there. Or what these, in addition to that role, what, what the stuff might be used for, you don't know. Nothing comes to mind. Shall we bring it back to Hancock? Uh, I suppose why not? I, I can't imagine what any of this would be used for. I mean, we know that certain bloods have certain properties. We learn that about that deep known blood. The gemstones are obviously valuable. We could share a little bit of that with him. Uh, how much are we talking? Like a couple of fistfuls? Like, oh, not even that much. Like there's <laughs> probably they're all small. I mean, like literally like D four sized, and yeah. there's probably like seven or eight of them. Like a small handful of of. You could give you know, him so one. Give him one or two. Split the rest. Sure. I mean the. Blood and the chunk of whoever the hell that is. We can give him the is. gems and keep the rest if you're curious. Perhaps whoever you were seeking the gnome blood for could tell you. Perhaps. I have no knowledge of the arcane. <laughs> I do not recognize these Did you give them either. the gnome blood? Yes, yes, I did this morning. I mean, uh, just a little while ago. Uh, it's been a long day. <laughs> I mean, three days ago. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I ate it. I drank it. <laughs> um, yes, I already did. But now that I think of it, I forgot that I have these you know, eyeballs. The gnome blood. Oh my uh, god, you've got like a whole human being <laughs> in your mouth. The eyeballs are definitely not here, human eyeballs. And this here, and then the toes there. <laughs> Sorry, let's circle back to the eyeballs. Um, but, do you know if the gnome blood could be um, consumed to stop internal magical effects? I have no idea. Um, that doesn't that was smell right oh. to me. I would imagine that it would have to be mixed with at least something else, or... I say, let's take back whatever you wish to Hancock, and if you want to keep the rest, that's fine. I care not. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold on to this, these bits and bobs. Uh, maybe one gemstone for us? You, you want to hand over all of them? <laughs> I care not. Well then I might take a couple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine, we'll, we'll all show, we'll give, let's, let all us right. give it two. All right. all right. We'll say there's seven of them. Right, okay. we will give him two. You can have four, no, the math is wrong. We'll give him three and we'll take two for our, each of us. <laughs> kind of tuck things away first and then. Just bring back the satchel with just the gems. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You do so. You start to walk back in that direction. You're getting a lot of kind of glares from various goblins. Yeah. But standing outside his tent, once again, sort of reading a piece of parchment. And as he looks up, you can see a little bit of surprise in his face mm -hmm. that you sort of return. Uh, a few shiny pieces for you. They're uh, gemstones. For your help. Why did you run? We were running after. Because the gentleman took the goods. 
Someone was scurrying away with it before we got a chance. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> we would not have run if not. If Perhaps you should tell your people that it's not really a good way to do business. She's gonna give him a sound. Thanks, Bullseye. Sounds like Jade Boyd. <laughs> Jade Boyd? Jade. Jade <laughs> Boing. Jade Boing. <laughs> <laughs> she is <laughs> troublesome. Mm. Mm, well, well, we caught her. Before you all are is, all is well. Honorable to return them. We, as we promised, we would. Good day, sir. Was this all there was? <sighs> no, there were a bunch honest, of weird things inside. Hmm. We're going to take them back. To be honest, I didn't get a great look inside the tent because we had to run after Boing, Oing Boing. Jade. Jade Boing. Boing. Mr. Walker. I will see that Jade Boing is punished. No, Thank you. <laughs> or go for it. Good Thank day. you again. Yep. <sighs> he looks in the satchel. And it, you can see before you kind of turn away, he picks out one of the gemstones and. Ooh. <laughs> 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 we have not made active enemies. Yes. Ugh. I suppose most it of them. It is always good to avoid. Most of them will remember us as uh, giving good sport. <laughs> Perhaps. Shall we back to the Paramount? See yes. if our friends have come back? Yes. Hopefully those six wolves didn't give them too much trouble. Do we know the number of wolves? That was a little joke I had with Ilium. He seemed to think he knew exactly how many. <laughs> <laughs> Bold, a little man. He is a confident man. young Yes, <laughs> confidence is high. Mm -hmm. Performance also has been high of late. Indeed. Who knows, who knows? But yes, bravado. <laughs> and strutting confidently <laughs> wow. through the doors of Paramount Lodge. <laughs> Returning from your journey, sort of <clears throat> passing through the sort of strange scene on the bridge, you return to Paramount, and once again, Clemens sort of looks out and sees arrival. Ah, welcome back. Um, Thank you. Miss Ishtig and Mr. Welker had already passed through. I was wondering when you might come by. Great. That's all You we... seem relieved. Had you uh, split at some point? We had. Um, there was a bit of trouble. Um, and we heard that they might have been caught up in it. So we wanted to check if you'd seen them. So you've answered our questions before we even had a chance. Uh, yes, happy to help. It was not long ago, 20, 30 minutes. Right. And they were intact, all, all limbs and, and, and eyeballs and everything? Uh, yes, uh, they looked tired, but um, as I understand it, they, they did go out with Miss Adams Rogue and yeah. mm. she is known to hunt a creature or two, so that did not seem unusual to me. Right. Great. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Mr. Clements. All right, I'm, I'm gonna head out then. Yeah, to uh, Mark Hall? To the Mark Hall. Yeah. Great, and see you here for dinner, possibly. Yeah. Where, where are you heading, Da? I have a couple errands I gotta run. All right, well, be safe. If you see TC and Morna, uh, let them know what our plans are and then we can maybe I'll meet up and uh, give, I don't know, a short amount of time. Sure. Okay. All right. Ready? See you soon. Mm -hmm. See you soon. <sighs> After you. I'll heave these bloody bags <laughs> of wolf head over my shoulder and maybe say like a quick sorry to Clemens on the way out about tracking <laughs> blood in his lobby. It doesn't seem like you're spilling blood on oh, before. Okay. <laughs> and he actually, when you were on your way in because you were sort of facing toward him, he didn't see them. But as you sort of acknowledge him and start to head out the door, you just see him sort of, Ooh. Gonna lean over his desk and just see ah. whatever you might be bringing. Kate mm. and Doxy will dig into her bag and pull out, um, like the pelts. Oh, yes, <laughs> that's important. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. A good haul. I hope. Seems like it. We'll find out real soon. <laughs> yeah. okay. Good day. Oh, ready? Okay. Yep. Head into the Merc Hall. Over to the Merc Hall. Nice. Start to head 
south and across the bridge. When you arrive at the Merc Hall, the seating area seems very empty at a first glance. And I believe this is your first time here, but to you, the last couple times, it wasn't packed, but you saw that crowd of hunters that seemed to have returned from mm -hmm. uh, some kind of hunt. And you pass through the arch and you enter into this kind of sort of barracksy, these long tables, mess hall kind of appearance. But the reality is the place isn't empty, but the, all the people that are present, which is maybe like a half dozen people, are huddled in a little semicircle around the cage where Daphne is usually posted behind. Mm -hmm. And indeed, the elven overseer of the barracks is in her customary spot. You see her right away. But she does seem to have her hands raised, and it seems like she's trying to calm the crowd that's around her, or at the very least get them to speak in turn rather than all at once. They're all kind of talking at the same time. And this mob of maybe, you know, six, seven, eight people, it seems like they have a fiery energy, but not like they're mad at Daphne, just like they're kind of worked up. Like there's a lot of sort of energy. They seem very sort of animated. People are gesturing, like chomping at the bit a little bit, sort of fervor in their eyes. And one of these people steps forward to say something to Daphne across with the cage in between them. And in doing so, reveals what is at the center of this little semicircle of people. There is a tied up and very badly beaten goblin that's wearing leather armor. God and a very crude blue headband around their head. And as the man kind of steps forward, Daphne raises her hands once more. One at a time. I'm gonna take down all your names and then we'll put the prisoner in the lockup. If he's got information on the Raiders that is helpful to us, we will see that you are all compensated. But if you make this process a messy one for me, nobody gets anything. And at that, there's kind of a, or a grumbling, quiet hush. Jalen is gonna come around and get the goblin to an open cell and everyone else form a line. And at that, you hear kind of a metal gate open. And you had seen him once before. Another sort of guy who does a lot of the books. You've seen him in the cage there. He comes out and he goes over to the goblin. He kind of, not super roughly, but he sort of grabs him firmly and kind of leads this beaten goblin into some kind of back room. And in the back room, you hear like a, some kind of clang, like a cell could be back there. Possibly, you know, if they have to lock somebody up in the, in the Merc Hall here, they have a, not like a prison, but just a couple of cells available for, for their use. So as the line starts to form, you see Daphne's one at a time, someone kind of comes up and sort of gives her name and she's kind of recording them down there. And as she's doing that, she sees you guys kind of coming in. You had been kind of at the periphery, but you take a step forward just to kind of see what's going on. And as she sort of clocks your appearance, you see her writing down one more name, and then she kind of, and then she gestures to kind of the tables in the area. And she goes back to her work there. So you have your pick of the litter. There's, the tables are mostly empty because the people here are mostly up at the cage now. It's a lot of excitement at the Merc Hall. Pierso. I'm gonna walk to basically the nearest bench and just kind of like straddle over it and dump the heads down. Yeah. You dump the heads down, and for a moment you kind of look and you're worried that maybe a little bit of the blood is seeping out of the yeah. table, but you also look to the left and right, there's blood stains all over yeah. the table. <laughs> <laughs> not not uncommon down. for creatures to be kind of hunted and brought back. Yeah. Here, so it doesn't seem to be of a, of a major concern to the people here. So, um, is this uh, usual? Type uh, thing for the Merc Hall? I don't know if you've been here that many times to know, but. Haven't seen anybody tied up the last time I was here. And uh, that's that's Daphne? That's Daphne, yeah. Wow. We went to school together. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's awesome that you have a fellow schoolmate here. Um, She seems to know what she's doing, can control the crowds. As oh, yeah. She's real powerful. Oh. In what ways? Yep, smart. Runs this place well, from what I can tell. As expected of a university student. Did you go to school? No. Well, not any university. I mean, I did my schooling, but not anything as extravagant as that. Did the Goryona not... Gore... Goreona. Goreo, what does it mean? What does it... What does it mean? Yeah, what does it mean? <laughs> if you're gonna tell me how to pronounce it, you should maybe tell me what it means. Does it have a direct translation? <laughs> it, it has a pretty direct loose. Do you want to tell her what it actually is? <laughs> yeah. It means it means like unexpected friends. That's the loose. Ah, uh, yes, of, yes, of yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, translates to 
Unexpected Friends. And it makes sense to you. It it is Elvish. It's kind of an old Elvish dialect mm. that has like a couple. So as he says it, it makes sense. But you the translation's a little muddy just because it's like a very old mm. word. So, but yeah, unexpected. Yeah, more of a school of hard knocks rather than <laughs> university. But yeah, yeah. With, them, with them. What would you say they taught you? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, how to tie my shoe. How to arrange documents. How to fight, everything in between is... So something you were born into. Yes, it was. What's the best thing they taught you? The best thing? Uh, mm -hmm. How to wield this greatsword, I would say, is my, it's my pride. What's the worst thing? There's a lot of bad things, but it's hard to choose. Um, yeah, uh, and I mean, I'm sure it doesn't compare to the university. And all that cool... Mm, books, 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 books. Punch, yeah. punch. I'm books. jealous. That sounds really cool. Yeah, it was kind of awesome. A lot of books. Well, you could find anything you wanted to, right? You could uh, you could learn how to make a garden. For... Garden, yes. Um, alchemy, not so much. Well, yeah, of course. It's a bit taboo. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Punching, yes. Oh. Yeah. There's, Kicking. There's punching yeah. lessons too? Oh, or are yeah. you reading books about how to punch? Oh, both. You know, well, theory, practice. Yeah. Wow, I always thought university students were more of a kind of stuffy and mm. reading most of books, which isn't bad, but I didn't expect any classes like that. Yeah, well, not where I went. I mean, the good mix of practical knowledge and, and, and theoretical knowledge. Hmm, how does that even work? The, uh, theoretical knowledge is what could be? Oh, history, you know. The techniques and oh. <laughs> that's uh, that sounds very interesting. Maybe maybe I'll become a university student myself one day. I think you'd like it. A couple more people finish. <laughs> <laughs> and after a moment, um, that other elf that took the goblin away comes back and seems to take over the recording of names. Like she sort of slides over a little ledger there, and then he takes over and starts to kind of motion people forward and take names. And as he takes over, Daphne goes out the cage and she starts to approach there. And she sits down. <sighs> Sorry for the wait. This lot was buzzing and uh, we needed to get the paperwork started. Daphne, Sabio. Ilian, Hyrun. Friends of Kate's or just along for the ride? Yeah, just recently. Hmm. Unexpected friends. Yeah. <laughs> There's a group of prospectors caught three goblins trying to steal chunks of mithril from their dig site. Killed two, tied up the third. <sighs> Realized they might be part of the raiding camp out beyond Little Hollow. You might remember this was mentioned on that list of contracts that I gave you. They're hoping for a quick little payday to fall into their laps, but that's contingent on whether this particular Hmong bean has anything useful to say. Mm. But anyway, um, you work fast, you're back. What can I do for you? Well, I see you have uh, presents for me. Yes, this is for you. <laughs> I'm gonna push the heads to Daphne. She, she pulls it over and she kind of opens it up. A little waft of kind of dead wolf smell kind of comes up. I knew you'd be an asset to the camp. Um, we had some questions about the, the, the rate, if it was per person or what the deal was, if we were split in it, um, whatever's fine, just, you know. I suppose I have good news and bad news. Uh, good news is, well, bad news is it's to split. Mm. Uh, the good news is that um, I got word from Fort Contrition that they were willing to kick in an extra 50 to see the job done. Now the contract wasn't officially updated yet, but I'll see you get the full 150 to split between you and whoever else as you see fit. That's lovely. That's great. We did get some help from somebody, so we would want to... Yes, yeah. uh, actually, yeah. I'll give it to you and you can dole it out as you like. Thanks. Uh, doing a brief sweep. Do I see Dale anywhere? You don't. There's not that many people in here and you don't see him. Uh, Are you looking for someone? Uh, a Dale. Uh, we found out in, in the downwheel and he had assisted and given some notes to us which made things a lot simpler. Yeah, Dale, I know. Decent enough guy. Gave us good intel about a month back regarding some peritons creeping in from the north. Probably saved some lives as he did. <laughs> Glad he was able to help. So what, you want to set something aside for him? Uh... Yeah, I mean, it, I can put it out of my own personal if we split it three ways. If you just want to keep five for him, a five gold would be great. He comes here now and then. I'll see that he gets it. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Daphne. Um, I have a question for you. So, 
You gave me a couple lists. I did? And <laughs> the list for Miss Maeve. Do you think if I showed up with a couple of those things, as opposed to all of them in one go, that would be okay? Or was it kind of like an all or nothing sort of thing? No, I got the impression that that was, those things she was looking for are used in various potions and right. concoctions. Uh, I don't know if they're all used in the same one. It's right. not my area okay. of expertise. Thank you. Um, also so you, um, she kind of leans in and she looks at Ilian first and then looks to you almost as if like, <laughs> Are we, is it okay to talk about this, you know, in the company of others? She gives you a knowing look. <laughs> the list for Maeve is this. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he knows. And know. you found something out there to your liking. Yeah, um, the, the. I'm gonna just gesture to the bloody, disgusting lion fur. <laughs> Damn. Ferocious beasts, but they are beautiful, aren't they? Uh, it was hard to take in the beauty when it was in my face, but upon <laughs> retrospect, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Did you stop by Maze yet in shore? That's our next stop. Someone I, I ran into um, wanted to mention to you in the downwield. Um, he seemed to want people to know he was running around in the woods. Um, I certainly didn't recognize him, but he came at me with a giant ass crossbow. And Dale came at you with a giant ass crossbow? No, no, someone, <laughs> this is a new person, um, who said his name was Ramo Klein. Give me a history check. No. Oh, come on, Come buddy. on, baby. Oh, All right. Uh... <laughs> oh my. Are you? <laughs> Four. The name like sounds that. awfully familiar, but you can't oh, place no. it. Oh, no! Hey, uh, you feel like you might have heard Doxley uh, talk about it at one point. But, okay. Um, but, <laughs> but okay. you don't remember in what context. Ridiculous. Okay. okay. Real and you man, see again. a little bit of a kind of almost like reeling back recognition out of Daphne. Ramo Klein. He really wanted people know, to know he was running around. Armed. Reputation as a thief. Not a petty one, neither. Hmm. Seemed to be alone. People actually thought he was dead. He definitely had that energy of someone who people thought was dead. <laughs> I'm not sure I take your meaning, but I believe you. <laughs> he was like a ghost, you know? Sure. He operated on the outside, stealing. People thought he went through the gate and that the clerics got to him. If what you say is correct and that was actually him and not just someone using his name, sounds like they didn't get to him. It was weird. What did he want from you? Just to let people know he was around, I guess. They didn't get him. Who are you gonna tell? Just you, for now? You can spread the word around if you want. Hard not to. <laughs> that kind of gossip. <laughs> cool. Um, so what's next? Tomorrow you tackle the trolls up at Shattershake? <laughs> <laughs> My friends don't seem as eager to get to that one just yet. <laughs> yeah, funny, we've had that contract for a while. <laughs> I'm down for a challenge, but maybe with a we made, couple extra hands. Might need to make a couple more friends first. Yeah. If anyone comes by who's interested, I'll point them in your direction. That would be great. That'd be awesome. I also seem to recall you said, if I did some of these things, you might tell me a little bit about that meeting and also why you're here. Pick one. Oh! Um, you do the trolls, you get the other one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna look at, uh, Kate's gonna look at Alien. <laughs> don't, don't. Or the goblins, I'm a good 
What happened at the meeting? Kind of gives a look over just to make sure that you guys are kind of speaking alone. They found something at one of Bison's dig sites. It was a, I don't know, I guess a statue or something. They were passing around a drawing of it. Sort of a human looking, I guess, holding out their hand or something. I guess the miners that dug it up got the impression that, I don't know, looked religious, maybe came from a church, got that sort of impression. Bunch of people got spooked. They brought it back to Bison, not the statue, the information. Bison held a little meeting. People in town that have been here for a while, people that own their own business, people who got a stake in Brunk Hollow. He decided to hold a vote as to what we should do with it. Didn't feel like it was his place to make that decision himself, which I appreciate. Options were to destroy it, leave it there, or bring it up to get a better look at it. People voted, some people abstained. Ultimately, we decided to bring it up. I know this isn't my part of the this deal. But You're here now. Too far to ask who voted for what, and... Hmm. I ain't gonna tell you all that. Fair enough. But, I said leave it there. It seemed like the prudent thing to me, but looking back on it, I think those of us who voted to leave it probably split the vote a bit. My second choice would probably be to destroy it, which had more votes than to leave it down there. And if I'd voted that way, it probably wouldn't be coming up right now. I see. But, whew, nothing to do until they bring it up and get a better look. I mean, finding a statue is one thing. Finding a statue underground is spooky. I agree. Got people nervous. I'm of the opinion that we're pretty well covered here in Broncalo. Too many people doing too much bad shit to think that the gods aren't watching. Mm. But, you never know. Well, now that the die is cast, perhaps we'll learn something good about it, or something more about it. Uh, You've surrounded yourself with optimistic friends. He is rather optimistic, yes. We'll see. Wouldn't be surprised if word gets out. Some people try to destroy it before it gets back to town. I know Bison's got that on his mind. I'll keep my eye out for a giant, spooky statue. If anyone asks, I didn't tell you. Of course. Yes, ma'am. It's a pleasure to meet you, by the way. Nice to meet you as well. I'll be back after those trolls. Sounds mm -hmm. good to me. I better help Jalen before the mob gets restless. Yeah, uh, good luck. Thanks. Don't be a stranger, Glory. Always work to be had if you're up for it. You got it. Have a good one. She gets back up, she gets back to it. Oh, did we exchange the gold and everything? Uh, yeah, we can yeah, save okay. it. She <laughs> grabbed it, well, she motioned to Jalen, who came okay. over and brought you a little sack for gold. So one, 150 gold, or did you leave some for? Yeah, I'll take 45 before splitting it even. Yeah. Great. Then I'll bring the 50 to you. Great, so you leave five gold for Dale's intelligence. No, I'm not <laughs> poor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> she brings over the gold and Ilian's like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> so close. <laughs> Perfect. More weapons. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> More Thumber, French here I come. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would like one quarter of a thumper, please. That's <laughs> <laughs> my down payment. <laughs> uh, All right. Glory to me. <laughs> yes, my unexpected blue friend. No more stalling. We better go. To Maves. Our best friend. Where I'm ready. I want to go. With all of my heart. Kate still hasn't gotten up out of her seat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kate, let's let's go. It's not. It'll be fine. Okay, can you give me a pep talk on the way there, though? Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I hope that wasn't the start of it. We're gonna swing yeah. back over to Paramount Lodgings, where Doxy was sort of left, um, leaving the company of both Kate and Ilian. Where are you headed? I'm gonna quickly go up to our room. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put my javelins away. I'm going to like take off my like traveler's outfit. I'm gonna put on my nicer outfit, but oh, I'll leave cool. the vest off and the jacket off. Just have like sleeves rolled up. Sure. Um, Casual sort of uh, off hours appearance. Ooh. After hours. <laughs> I didn't say after hours. I said <laughs> off hours. Her cocktail dress. Yeah. 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 Little black dress. Dressing for dinner. Oh, oh Doc's is wearing a suit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> for sure. Um, and then she's gonna go to the mirror and she's going to practice like a face. Like she's going to try to get a certain look on her face that has like a bit of a tired, forlorn, sort of defeated look. She's gonna go back and forth between like a pleasant face and then a more sad face. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, Ilian. And I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna head to Maeve's. Okay. What the fuck? Let's <gasps> in that direction. Before I had left, um, can I search in my bag that was holding the mane and see if there was just like some remnants of some fur, just like some little, like, pieces that had fallen off from the main pelts? <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. I think at the yeah. back of the field, Kate would have taken the bulk of it. But yeah, sure, yeah. if you collect, if you grabbed a few scraps of, of the lion's mane, that's what you're talking. When about. I first skinned it, I put it in my bag, so I'm hoping there's like trace evidence. Sure. Yeah. There's there's okay. clump like a, maybe a couple small clumps. Cool. So I'm gonna go to Maeve's. All right. You head to Maeve's, and the first time that you've been there, but you know, you've heard of her, you've heard Ilian speak of her, you know that she lives in the sort of, uh, sort of water wheel um, adjacent dwelling there. As you work your way toward the creek, there's a woman kind of pacing near the backside of the dwelling. And she seems to be in reasonably good spirits. She doesn't seem annoyed or, or upset in any way. However, you can see a, a look on her face like she's almost trying to puzzle something out, like something's a curiosity to her. And a couple of times as she's pacing, she stops and she sort of lifts her head so their ear is facing the water wheel. And she listens in that direction, which as far as you can tell, the wheel seems to be rotating normally, kind of a repetitive that motion over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. She's distracted enough that you get pretty close to her before she even kind of notices you. And even then, she definitely has her attention divided, like looking over her shoulder at the wheel, almost as if she heard something concerning or unusual or something to that effect. As you approach, she turns and she's rolling up her sleeves and she also pulls a pair of leather gloves out of her dress pocket. That seems like, I don't know, she might be about to handle some substances or like work gloves kind of that she's wearing. And then you're kind of walking up to her. Maeve? Yeah, what can I do for you? I was uh, in the market for a healing potion, something you sell. Mostly people go over to Good as Gold for that. But do you have them? I prefer to buy it from the actual source if you made them. I don't make them. Not the healing potions. Something else quick I can help you with because I'm about to unhitch the wheel from my apparatus on the inside. No, I guess not. And Docs will turn away. All right. And when her back is to Maeve, she's oh. gonna throw that face on, that more tired, <laughs> little forlorn face. Okay. And quickly turn to Maeve. I'm afraid I have a confession and also sort of an apology for you, actually. The healing potion was just sort of pretense. Um, Great. I'll be quick. Quicker would be better. Sea elf and a wood elf coming here a couple times maybe in the last couple days. Sure, yeah. One's my brother and we came to f to Bronk Hollow sort of to start anew, to get away from a business that mostly dealt with deceit and acting clandestinely. And uh, I have a feeling it's something he's having a hard time letting go of and he's starting it again with this other one. And I just wanted to warn you that <gasps> They might be trying to pull something on you, so if they come to you talking about some sort of mysterious, long-lost magics or wanting any of that, just to be careful. That's all. 
Give me a deception check. Oh, oh okay. my god. <laughs> <laughs> Honoring it. Okay, deception. Mm-hmm. How's that bus feel on top of <laughs> I. Ooh, this is going to be risky. Damn. I'm going to use Bio my up. bully for you ring. Bully, bully's best bully friend. Bully's best friend, sorry. You may indeed. To roll again. <laughs> Never felt like this in my yeah. life. It's hard. No. <laughs> I had two clients come in earlier today. And as they was waiting for me to produce their wares, they spoke of some new arrivals. Just conversation, casual life. Talked about two CLs that came in from Peron with a mixed reputation. Unsavory family business and the like. Yeah. You telling me you came here to get away from it all. What better place to start anew than Broncolo? Mm. Anyways, they're gonna be bringing you some of this and she'll take out a little bit of the fur. Sure. Another effort to get into your good graces. I'm sorry. I guess I'm sorry too. Thanks anyway. I'm gonna see to my wheel now. Have a good night, Maeve. Nice to meet you. Sure. I'm gonna turn and leave. <sighs> Where do you head? Dirty. That's a good question. Dirty. I am. Good thing, Colin. If you like. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna start walking back to the main thoroughfare. But okay. Start still trying direction. to figure things out. Not, you know, given the timelines matching up, not 10 minutes later, coming across the bridge there, Ilian leaning in, sort of talking to Kate, <laughs> hyping her up as you approach Maeve's place. And at this point, she looks like she has gone inside and maybe uh, stopped the wheel, like used some kind of mechanism, because as you approach, the wheel is raised out of the water a little bit and it's no longer turning. So the wheel has clearly been lifted in an effort and she's on the backside of her dwelling and she's kind of like pulling at the flaps, kind of looking at each one, almost as if she's looking for kind of damage or some kind of uh, inconsistency with all the flaps. So you, that's what you see as you're kind of approaching. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the talking. At least to start. Yeah, great. She looks busy, though. <laughs> she's always busy. She's always going to be busy. But she's doing something really, like a really big piece of machinery right now. Do you want to do the talking or me? I don't want you to do it. What <laughs> the heck? Okay, <laughs> sure. You do the talking. I'm going to wait right here. This is going to be great. Does it look like she's going to be done anytime Kate, soon? Kate, <laughs> I don't know. Just ask her. It's fine. It's fine. She likes directness, I think. Um, <clears throat> Maeve, is this an okay time to drop something by? <laughs> Long as you don't need a potion made, sure. The wheel's not working, so it's not mixing on the inside. You got it. Um, I just wanted to bring this by, and I'm gonna take out the fleece main line for and like, is there a table I can just set it on? You're outside. Oh, moment. we're outside. Yeah, okay. she's like on the backside, attending to the wheel at this point. Okay, you I'll can just take it out gesture it out, yeah, and then I'll grab the, I'm gonna grab the, uh, the spinnerets. Sure. Yeah, out of the bag and bring them out. Um, my friend Daphne gave me a list of things that she said you might be in need of, and I just wanted to show you I can be useful in case you <laughs> ever need help around here. You came here just to give that to me. Yeah, to give it to you, to show you I can be useful. <laughs> How'd you know I was looking for that? Oh, uh, Daphne. She gave me a list. I can show you the list if you want. Fucking nosy ass Daphne. <laughs> Come on inside. <coughs> <coughs> <Yeah. Jones> 
it up. And as you move inside, it's so much quieter in here without the wheel turning. Like it's actually quite cozy. The only thing you can hear is a little bit of muffled din from the thoroughfare and a little bit of the river moving, the creek moving on the outside mm -hmm. as she closes the door. Again, sort of everything's sort of isolated, sort of around you. A very intimate little moment here mm -hmm. in in her sort of abode. And she gestures to the largest table in the center that often has some of her apparatus on it, glass bottles, vials, various uh, tubes and racks and things, and she kind of pushes a couple things out of the way, gestures to the middle. This is good. Today you got this. Uh, yeah, we got the fur earlier, but uh, yes. Lillian got the spinnerets, so. Right, it's from today. Just the two of you? Uh, no, the spinnerets uh, I got while I was with uh, my sister Doxley, TC, and Morna. And then... uh, Doxley was with us for the collecting the lion fur as well. Yeah. Your sister? Yeah. Must be nice to have family in town. It is. I'd feel very lost without her here, I'd say. You close? Am I close? With your sister, are you oh, close? I, extremely. I wouldn't hesitate to give my life for Doxley. Think she feels the same way? I, she's had my back since the day I was born. No reason to say otherwise. Hmm. She can be a little cold, but she does yeah. seem to have her heart in the right place. How freely am I fucking speaking? Because you came to me separately. You were looking for something, you were looking for something. I ain't looking to get in the middle of it, so. Right, uh, I'm just picking up uh, the things I ordered. And that's right, it. and when you say the things you ordered, am I calling them the things you ordered? That's up to you, Maeve. I don't want to spill your work out. It's your fucking order. That's why I'm asking. If Would you're... you rather she wait outside for a moment? I can step outside if you need. No, it should be fine. I trust Kate. Uh, speaking about the truth serums. Yeah, I got your tell-all tinctures. Two doses, like you asked. The vials are small. She reaches into a door, takes out their teeth. They're like little thimble, barely larger than thimble size mm. little things. The vials are small and they're unspeakably bitter. Most people mix it into another beverage to avoid a gagging reaction. Something sweet like a honey mead does it best. I see. Uh, okay. You said, and I agreed, that we would talk prices when you got back. It's 150 per dose. I figured I would Those prices ain't inflated in any way. I believe you, and you do good business. Um, I was afraid I wouldn't have the gold up front, but I'm willing to pay in other ways, Maeve. Like the knowledge that I promised you, and knowledge in the future. And at that, she kind of rolls her eyes, exaggerated. If you want gold, I can start paying today, and when I have more, that as well. But I'd also be willing to be open about what I'm trying to learn. How much do you have now? 64 gold. <laughs> If your friend is keen to let go of this fur for nothing, other than talking, of course, I can let you have it now. And when you get the rest, you can bring it back. Well, I think we may take that. I believe the knowledge that I could share with you is worth quite a bit, mate. Are you sharing that with me now? I believe I'd know more after I speak with the Monteros, but I can tell you if you have any questions now, I said I would answer any of them upon picking them up. Yeah. I told the Monteros that you'd be stopping by for a chat under the influence. Perfect, I was gonna be completely open with them as well. I did it so you don't take it and use it on somebody else, <laughs> because I would know. Smart. 
I'm sure you also know, because you're the one that came asking for him, that it ain't foolproof. Its effects can be resisted, and it's difficult to know for certain if it's working, and unless you catch him in a lie, I guess. Sure. It's better than nothing, in my mind. I suppose that's true. You said I could ask you anything about... Anything about anything. I'll be open. That was my word. Mm. The words you came asking me about... Yeah. ...when we talked about the truth serum... Was it a member of your family... Your family of questionable ethics that first told you about that word? Yeah, it was. Hmm. It's my grandmother. She got you looking for something here in Broncala? I've got me looking for something in Broncala. Hmm. And out of non-ethical family members, which there are a dime a dozen, she's one I wouldn't put in that category. Your sister neither, hmm? Those two. Alrighty then. She slides the little vials across. Oh. Off you go with your little bag of liquid honesty. Now is that for the fleece mane? Or does Kate here get something else? Kate gets to stay here while you leave. Alright. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you, Maeve. Thanks. Greatly appreciate your business. Oh. Thanks for the spinnerets and your help getting the fur. Sure. Anytime. I'll see you out. She walks. She motions to a chair. Sit down. She walks you out and opens the door, sort of leads you out, and she closes the door mostly behind her, not mm -hmm. fully, and she grabs you by the elbow before you start to walk away. Consider using those on someone closer to you than the Monteros. Back to the Monteros. She comes back inside. When you first came here, you gave me just about the worst fucking pitch to be in my employ that I've ever heard. <laughs> now you come in bearing gifts of considerable value, but I still find you less than somewhat direct. She takes a little rolled cigarette out of a drawer and she takes a little tinder box. You don't mind? No, ma'am. I can't tell if you're looking to make black powder for yourself or if you're hoping to trade that knowledge for something else. But either way, I'm not sure I see the angle. A problem with knowing how to make items of ample destruction is that the worst kind of fucking people come asking to make an order. Now I dabble in alchemist's fire I dabble in a couple kinds of poisons, other minor implements of harm. But black powder, my curiosity notwithstanding, is a different kind of animal. People would pay big for that kind of power. And if you don't accept payment, they might hurt you to get at it. You prepared for that possibility? Yes. I take it you got some kind of diagram or manuscript, unless it's knowledge that you have memorized, which would be both impressive and probably prudent, yet also unlikely. If you're asking me to reproduce it right now, I don't know that that's something I am quite comfortable with, given everything you've just said. 
And beyond interpreting this one diagram, I want the knowledge that you have for my own future. I don't just want to make one thing. I want to learn what you know. But the diagram you have is for this one thing. If I could read it, I could tell you for sure. It's just a feeling I have. I'd bet it's written in primordial. That would make sense. Wouldn't be surprising. It's said that some of the earliest advanced alchemists learned from the elementals of old. Genies, Tao, Ephrati. Kept tradition alive and their secrets safe by writing it down this way. Some of it I can read. That's so freaking cool, Maeve. Is that something you would teach me? Not if you're gonna, not gonna let me look at it. Well, I think you probably understand, given everything you've said, my hesitancy in showing it to anyone, given that it's a danger I'm taking upon myself, and it would be a danger that I would be putting on you to have this knowledge. Mm. A healthy attitude, but it puts us at somewhat of an impasse. Time to decide what you're really fucking doing here. From what I know of you, and I've only been in town a couple days. Best to keep that in mind. <laughs> you work for yourself. But I guess until I know that for sure, I ought to keep it to myself. Is there anything you would consider teaching me in the meantime? Well, I can figure out for sure how to keep this knowledge in the best hands possible. She gets up from the stool that she's in, she goes over to a drawer and you, because you just saw it happen, she goes over to the same drawer that she went to open up to give Ilian his package. Mm -hmm. She reaches out, and between her middle finger and then the two fingers on either side, she picks up two very small vials, oh looking exactly like the ones she gave to Ilian. Oh! Okay. What the fuck? <laughs> and she puts it on the table, and she slides one over to you, and she takes one, and she puts it down in front of her. Yeah. You want to know if I work for myself. This is how we do it. Otherwise, I say thank you for the fur. I provide you with a myriad of potions at a reasonable price. And we otherwise avoid intimate chats like this one for the rest of our time in Broncolo. I'm gonna grab the vial and slide it towards me. Cheers. I need you to give me a constitution saving throw. Oh, oh. <laughs> come on. Oh. No. No, this one, yeah. yeah. <gasps> Four. For an hour, oh, you can't tell a knowing lie. That's okay. a long time! <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know Kate is not that good at lying anyway. <laughs> that does not prevent you from skirting a subject. You can yeah. simply not answer it, but you literally, like if you tried to, it would get stuck in your throat. You literally That's cannot like tell a knowing lie. like all of next line. week. <laughs> <laughs> As you feel the liquid, it is incredibly bitter. Like you almost spit it out immediately. It has this oh. just, tangy blandness that just permeates through your taste buds. And it's like, as you go to swallow it, it feels like you're swallowing sand. Like it's just this awful sort of mixture. And you can see Maeve too, even 
as someone who has probably had her fair share of odd concoctions, she pours it back and has to kind of gulp it down. She puts it to the side. (sighs) Is there someone you would go sharing this information with? No. Why? Because I work for me. I've tried working for others, and it doesn't work at all. Is there an amount of money that someone, say Bison, could give you for the knowledge of how to make this substance? No. How strong is your constitution? (laughs) Whatever I say isn't gonna ease your mind. That is the truth. Are you willing to teach me what you know beyond just this one project we can work on together? What else do you want to know? Everything. You seem to have an idea in your head that alchemy is a glamorous profession. (laughs) I have found that to not be the case most of the time. I just want to know what my great-great-grandparents knew before that got taken away from them. I'd like to know that too. So let's take a look. Can I have a piece of paper? It's an inkwell. Having stared at this so much, this is Erica speaking, having stared at this so much, (laughs) I am going to recreate it from memory. So there's a lot of pages. Yeah. I mean, it's not huge, but there's at least, you know, 20, 30 pages. So recreating the whole thing. And in addition, some of it is written in, in either Elvish, mm-hmm. mostly Elvish, but uh, the primordial parts, you would not just, be, that's basically trying to recreate like a painting from memory because there's, the symbols don't mean anything okay. to you. It's not a language that you speak, mm-hmm. so you're not like, like penning letters. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you can certainly attempt, but you with ink in hand and paper in front of you know that you're not about to make some kind of faithful recreation of it in front of her. That's unrealistic. Okay, fine. (laughs) I'll stare at the paper. (laughs) And then put it down and grab the book out of my bag. It's kind of a little bundle of parchment and kind of with a band Uh around it there that you take out. I don't want to part with this, but we can look at it together. She gets up, she takes her stool, and she puts it, like, <laughs> right next to you. <laughs> Can I have some of that smoke? <laughs> she grabs it. <laughs> Give me a constitution saving throw. Oh, oh my boy. God. <laughs> Twelve. Twelve. As you inhale... <laughs> You feel the blue fumes pouring into your mouth there. And it has this hazy effect. Like it feel, it doesn't feel sort of disorienting, but it feels like your whole body is almost sort of melting back into the chair that you're sitting into. It very much has this suppressing effect. Your thoughts start to just kind of, the nerves that you've built up here in the room prior to showing her the book, sort of the energy inside you, that nervous energy begins to kind of release and fade kind of into your stomach and then dissipates a little bit. And thoughts come in and out and just vanish. Like you have the thought that, oh my God, all those feelings I had are gone. And then that feeling is just gone. (laughs) And then you have this nervous energy like, oh my God, I'm about to show her this and then that feeling's gone. Like, feelings Mm -hmm. come and go easily and Mm -hmm. easily and quickly. Like, it just has that kind of calming Mm -hmm. effect to it. Very sedative kind of effect. I'm gonna have my hand on the book. 
What brought you here? I come from a place a little north of Saywall. And not a lot of good comes out of that place. Myself included. Someone paid for me to come here instead. And I was grateful for the passage that I could not afford. Who taught you all of this? A lot of it I cobbled together myself from texts much like you did, or you're trying to do. Some of it I learned from minor alchemists from the city, from Seiwon. But everything that I wanted to know, nobody would teach me. I took a few trips further north to a place called the Ogram Mountains. It's not out of the gods' eyes, but it's further from religion than other places. I was able to learn some things there that I probably could not have in Seiwal. I probably risked my own safety more than I ought to. But so it goes. I had somebody learn of my budding talents. And like I said, they paid to have me come here. Where I could learn in a bit more freedom of space of sorts. You got books you're working out of now too, still? I have a few. You gonna let me see him? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Provided you take your hand off that fine looking piece of leather. I'm from Saywall too. I'm not from Saywall. <laughs> <laughs> Just outside. Um, okay, I'm gonna open up to like the very creased like mm. page where this particular <laughs> set of diagrams start. You flip through a couple of the first pages quickly and she can see immediately that the first couple pages are in Elven script, so you, you can read those. A lot of introductory stuff about, a lot of it is very technical language and sort of like, you know, preparing, basically setting up your space for larger experiments. The equipment that you might need, the apparatus, vials, bowls, mortar and pestle, things like that. It has kind of lists of that mm. kind of nature. I'm also not going to let go. Sure. <laughs> my side of the book, like not even intentionally, I just can't do it. Sure. You keep your hand on the book mm -hmm. and Maeve leans over. She's like, her head is now like four inches from your face as mm. she kind of leans over. She looks at the book. You see her start to pour over the pages there. All right, some of it I can read because I've seen other texts this way. Some of it's got some symbols I don't fucking recognize. I might need to brew up a potion of comprehension to get at the particulars. Mm. Now, you've taken a hop, but I'm gonna ask you to make a leap. Can you leave this here with me? Would you decipher as best I can? I can stay here as long as it takes. I tell you what I can see at a glance. There's some lists of ingredients, preparation methods. I see sulfur, charcoal, guano. Just about every paragraph has one that follows it with a warning not to fuck around <laughs> and ways to keep yourself safe during its formulation. I'm gonna have to work through these documents slow to take note of what might be readily available around here. Charcoal's easy, sulfur you can find, what might need to be sent for, and what might be entirely out of our reach. Mm. And for those items, one might have to improvise, 
which comes with its own risks and complications. Can I copy a few of these pages over while you have it open and you take the book with you? You come by tomorrow morning and I run it by you. If I have enough supplies on hand for a second comprehension potion, you can take it and lay eyes on the text yourself. And come by early as you like. I'll be awake. First couple pages. <laughs> Push the paper <laughs> towards her. She reaches over and she grabs the paper that you didn't write yeah. on. And she <laughs> slides it across to herself. She dips the ink. I'm a slow writer. Make yourself comfortable. And she begins to slowly trace the outlines, moving back and forth between the pages, copying over some mm -hmm. of these primordial symbols into her notes here. And you see a side of Maeve you haven't seen before. You see her mesmerized by these pages, like the focus that she has. And the focus especially because you just sort of smoked that ether cigarette yeah. and your mind is like a little <laughs> foggy and she's the opposite. She looks like she's glued to these pages, mm -hmm. like for not for a second. At one moment she goes to grab her cigarette, she doesn't look for it, she grabs it, puts it back down all while still reading the pages. Mm -hmm. She continues to write and slowly the cigarette gets shorter and shorter oh. and shorter as she continues to smoke and continues to flip back and forth between the pages. And she takes the ink and she kind of dots one more period and looks up at you. And that's where we're going to end for tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, Matt! Oh. Thank you, Matt! Thank you, Matt! Thank you! As Kate takes her first big steps. You did it. Oh, in the man. Battle. Thank you, Matt! Thank <laughs> you, Matt! Oh, my God. Wow. That is where we're going to end tonight's stream. A lot of great role play tonight. Some scenes, some some meetings that we've been waiting to have. We got to meet Hancock. We got to see yeah. Maeve talk about the book. We got to uh, check back in with the Merc Hall and many others. Damn. And that's where we're going to pick it up next week. Damn. Next week, once again, we'll remind it, Notch and Soda next week. Yes. So. Oh, 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 the episode yes. Yes. oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> In addition oh, to the episode man. itself, we'll get to we'll get Explain to Explain yourselves! All wow! Of you. All of you. Explain! Uh, Explain! Uh, I've done what? nothing this Yeah, episode. what is the matter with you? Are you <laughs> what is yeah. wrong? You are, what you are you doing? Tell here. me about your uh, grandmother now. A uh, failed oh, the deceptions did not roll uh, your way. I rolled an uh, eight and then a nine. Uh, yeah. Stuff. Yeesh. What was the DC? Uh, for a difficult check lately. Like, 14, something like that. I wasn't even that high. Not anything you could do. <laughs> I couldn't even roll had advantage with advantage? With the, yeah, with the... Oh, Jesus. Oh, I gotta tap that the way. Yeah, Holy tough. cow. Oh, My wow. heart rate is like <laughs> simply up. Uh, awesome Ooh. stream, everybody. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, uh, more to come next week at our usual time. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah wow. uh, join us in the Discord <laughs> yeah. to talk about this episode. Talk about the Discord. Oh, Give us your thoughts. Like why Anthony is such a monster. Mm. What are you oh talking God. about? Monster. <laughs> monster. You gat is this Ooh, gaslighting? I don't know what gaslighting <laughs> is. But this feels like that. Gaslighting this feels like what that is. Girl boss. <laughs> <laughs> obscuring. You're obscuring. <laughs> deflecting. 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 Obscure and deflect. That's um, your whole thing. I mean, I'm just disappointed. All right, everybody. <laughs> Do you have wow. to thank people? Yes, oh. I have to thank oh. people. Thank oh you. Oh my god. I'm so busy blaming Anthony for deflecting. For what? We love to blame Anthony. <laughs> obscuring it and works deflecting. every time. Obscuring and deflecting. <laughs> obscuring and deflecting. I'm catching um, it all right in the chin. Oh my god. Okay, here <laughs> we go. Uh, Crunchy Scorpion gifted a sub, a plus size noose. <laughs> Subscribe with Prime, thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> I, thought was, I thought it's a plus size <laughs> noose, that's why I was laughing. Ali Slayer did 100 bits, Vexalon did 100 bits, Cave on Clave gifted a sub, Master Dark did 100 bits, Jay Brownie did 500 bits, Ali Slayer 100 bits, Frank and Carr resubscribed, uh, Chief Leaf resubscribed, Ali Slayer 100 bits, uh, Finesse Men community sub, so thank you. And then Jay Brownie with 500 bits. Thank you all. Very, thank very you guys much. so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you guys, guys are the best. We can't wait next week to pick it back up and then talk with all of you after. 
Get your questions ready. Yes, oh my definitely. god. Um, yeah. Like we said, uh, if, if you can't make the stream or something, we we're gonna look for some questions like elsewhere. Yeah, for like, if, yeah. You, if you're a like YouTube member and you, like it's not the platform that you typically watch on, you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, and also cool. if you yeah. either can't stay that late or you know post them in the Discord, we, we read from all sources. So yeah. feel yeah. free to throw them in there. Yeah. Um, all right, everybody, we're gonna let you go. Have oh, a wonderful week. Uh, oh. Enjoy. The bonus oh, treat. Bonus, oh. bonus, oh. bonus, bonus treat. A bonus treat. I forgot about the bonus treat. Um, Post-credit scene. Post-credit scene. Uh, to no one's surprise, Stephen Chukowski has hey, given us hey, that's another that is our song. king. Can I turn this on? Um, is it, on? Uh, it won't be on here, okay. but it, can you want to pull up the stream? Uh, yeah, I have it on here. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so enjoy this wonderful song. Are Yay. we off camera? I'm assuming. Oh yeah, yeah. It's oh, okay. just, just going to play we were out. Still. Okay, yeah, yeah. great. It's just going to oh, take nice. us out. All right, everybody, All right. enjoy this stirring rendition by the wonderful Stephen Chukowski, and have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. It's like I think it's. It's in the sky. I don't know where it is. Oh <laughs> I have no God. idea where it is. It's like, it's the POV. We are the yes, wolf. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mid battle, I am battered and I stand before a foe. I fear what they'll do to me with their next great big blow. Few hit points left and shaky legs, I'm frozen to the core. Just seconds left, make peace with gods, I guess that's what they're for. They snarl something awful, black blood gushing from their face And take a fearsome swipe at me with a pointy rusty mace But a dagger I had lodged in their thigh made them move with strife And they missed me as I dodged in time for another chance at life Sky wolf, watch over all these dice as they take flight Sky wolf, let me live another day Yes, watching true. over. <laughs> My comrades all around me have been beaten to the ground. Their cries for help and moans of pain I hear is the only sound. With the effort of a thousand soldiers dying in their bed, a mighty great two handed sword I lift above my head. Sweaty palms and sweaty brow, I take my dice in hand. Squeeze tight my eyes and shake them round and wonder how they'll land. Covered mouths and shallow breaths, my teammates watch and breeze. Fingers unfurl, I let them fly, transported to that place. Sky wolf, watch over all these dice as they take flight. Sky wolf, let me live another day. Floating wolf still there. <laughs> my grip is tight, my focus clear, sword steady in my hand. As I swing down upon their crown and make my final stand. Bloodstained blade swings through the air and glints in the setting sun. My shadow long upon the ground as we face off one on one. Big baddie of the whole ordeal, now's not the time to choke. The patron of combative hands, the sky wolf I invoke. I hear the first thud of the die, and all our eyes do dart. And I see and hear that second thud, and pace with my beating heart. Sky wolf, watch over all these dice as they take flight. Sky wolf, let me live another day to fight. Get out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Get out of here! Third and final thud we hear as the die begins to roll. And I hope it lands on something big with my entire soul. I hear it finally settle slowly, open up my eye. And through that squinty wink of mine is a twenty that I spy. The force of my sword clings the mace out of their iron grip. And the sharpened blade like a butter knife through their skull starts to rip. Brain splattered bones are cracking in my own death I defy. I thank my lucky stars to the great big wolf in the sky. Sky wolf, watch over all these dice as they take flight. Sky wolf, let me live another day to fight. You let me live another day to fight.